On day one, I spawned as an itty bitty fire Godzilla. This is rad, but wait, I've only got three hearts. What, that's not rad at all. But when I focus real hard, I can make little fires. Look, I just set that tree on fire. Uh oh, it looks like I upset the baboons who were living there. They're coming after me, I better hightail it out of here. I ran off deep into the forest. Being a tiny baby fire Godzilla wasn't working out great for me so far. Maybe if I can get bigger and stronger, I can use my powers to help people, rather than just burn their houses down. That'll help me make some friends around here. Maybe that big, tough, warped Moscow will be my friend. Hey, I'm Zozo. I'm pretty new around here. Wanna hang out? Hey, hey, not so fast, buddy. You wanna hang out here? You gotta pay the toll. Empty your pockets, little fire Godzilla. But I don't have any money. Then I guess you better come with me, Zozo. If you can't pay, you gotta work. That was another bridge I'd already burned. I needed to run before the warped Moscow could get his big buggy hands on me. I grabbed a few sticks from the forest and hid in a cave. These would make some pretty good torches with a little bit of my fire, so it won't be too dark in here. I proceeded to place down some torches before deciding to go to sleep for the night. I'm gonna need to get a lot stronger if I want to last out here. This place isn't kind to baby fire Godzillas like me. On day two, I woke up in the cave to find my torches had gone out overnight. It was so cold and dark. What if there are spiders in here? I should get moving. I left the cave and entered the forest to explore my surroundings. Wow, this forest is huge! So many trees, so much wood to burn. I needed to be careful in here or I'd set everything on fire. When I build my own base, it should probably be made out of stone. I needed to break down a couple of these trees and gather some sticks and wood to make a wooden pickaxe. Perfect! This will be great for mining stone! Now I needed to find a good place to build my base. Maybe somewhere around here? Wait, has somebody already built a cabin here? What's happening here? A druid rushed out of the cabin. Hey, hey, keep your distance, friendo. I just finished this place. I don't need you burning it down. I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to burn your cabin down. I just needed to find a place to make my base. Base? What? Are you one of Lochnar's guys? What? No, I'm Zozo. Who's Lochnar? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the dead. He and his boys have been harassing people about money around here lately. The druid returned back into his cabin after bidding me farewell. Money? That sounds just like that warped Moscow from yesterday. He must have worked for this Lochnar guy. I better start mining for stone near the druid's cabin. He'd probably make a decent neighbor. By day three, I started gathering materials for my base. I used my wooden pickaxe to start mining stone in a cave next to the druid's place. Hope he doesn't mind a little construction noise. Hey, keep down that racket, Zozo. I'm reading. Now that I know there's a necromancer out there building an army of the dead, I should probably go pay attention to home security. First of all, I took the time to clear out an area and build a big stone wall. Yes. This should keep out that warped Moscow if he tries to hassle me for more money. And I won't be able to accidentally burn this wall down either. While I was at it, I needed to get myself a weapon. Maybe I could use some of my spare sticks and wood to make a wooden sword. Hopefully I don't burn it to a crisp. Now I'm looking well prepared. While I was making my way towards the druid's cabin, I noticed something crawling out of the forest. It looked like an elder skulk. Better take care of it before it gets too close to my base. Don't you know it's rude to trespass, Mr. Skulk? Let's go! Hiya! With this sword, the elder skulk was no match for me. After I hit it a few times, skillfully dodging its attempts to hit me back, it went scuttling off into the forest again. Nobody beats Fire Godzilla! And clearly that fight made a big difference, because I was starting to get bigger and stronger. I had five hearts now, and I could let out a terrifying Godzilla roar! On days four and five, I decided to go a little further into the forest to mine some more stone for my base. The wall was nice, but it wasn't exactly cozy. I needed a roof over my head. I already used some of my spare stone to make a stone pickaxe. But when I ventured out into the deep part of the woods, I ran into an old enemy, the Warped Moscow. You really thought you could get away without paying the toll? You really have no idea who you're dealing with, kid. You don't want my boss to have a problem with you. Your boss? Is he a necromancer? Huh, <laughs> you're smarter than you look, Zozo. My boss, Lochnar the Necromancer, He's gonna come take over all this soon enough. And if you're not with him, you're against him. I'd never be the guy who wants to take over a forest by force. I may burn stuff down sometimes, but I'm still a good guy. Then I guess I've got to destroy you. And Moscow came at me so fast, I was knocked back off my feet. I pulled out my wooden sword and tried to parry all of his attacks. You can't hold me off forever, Zozo. But I was a little faster than he was. Even with my wooden sword, I was able to get the jump on the warped Moscow and defeat him. 
Looks like I can handle myself decently now. I should probably spend a little more time out of the forest, though. On day six to eight, I depleted my mine in the forest. At least I was able to find some iron ore, though, and craft myself a cool iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Let's just see someone try to mess with me now. But after getting attacked by the Moscow, I wanted to get away from the forest for a while. I decided to take a trip up to the mountain and enjoy that clean mountain air. And I can't burn anything down up here either. It's perfect. But suddenly, a mountain troll approached me, and it seemed like he didn't want to share the mountain with anyone. This mountain isn't big enough for the both of us, even if you are the puniest fire godzilla I've ever seen. I'm just visiting, man. You don't need to be so mean about it. How dare you call me mean? I'm gonna crush you into dust for that. He was so big, and he started chasing me. My only advantage was that I was much faster than him, so I could keep my lead. That's where my iron pickaxe came through. With my iron pickaxe, I quickly mined a big hole in the ground, then carried on running. With my trap set, I decided to taunt the mountain troll by calling him a slowpoke. He ran up to me not looking down, until he fell into the hole and he couldn't climb back out. A uh, little help in here? I think you've earned yourself a time out, mountain troll. On days 9 and 10, I decided to travel further up into the mountain until I found a mountain cave hidden among the rocks. Maybe there will be some treasures hidden in here. Better take a look. I walked into the cave, iron sword at the ready, using the natural light of my fire to light the way. That's when I hit the jackpot. Gold ore deposits. Yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. I started to mine the gold, when suddenly, despite my fire, it started to get extremely cold inside of the cave. It sent a chill down my spine. Hello there, little creature. I turned, and that's when I saw him right there, staring at me. It was Lochnar the Necromancer. Somehow, I could feel the power coming off of him. It was time for me to even the score and use my Fire Godzilla roar. But Lochnar just laughed in response. <laughs> Be quiet, boy. Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? When my army walks the earth, every flame like yours will be snuffed out. I wasn't going to take that sitting down. I ran at Lochnar with my iron sword and prepared to hit him. But with one strike from him, I was thrown back across the cave. Uh -oh. You're so weak. It's pathetic. You're not even worth destroying yet. Perhaps when you're a little stronger. And with a flash, Lochnar was gone, and I was left terrified. If even my fire Godzilla roar did nothing, what hope did I have against him? But it wasn't all bad. I noticed then that I still wasn't alone in the cave. There was a fire villager waiting in there too. When Lochnar was gone, he ran towards me. I can't believe you survived. Lochnar has been going after all of the flame creatures in the land. But why? What have we ever done to him? He's a necromancer. He's trying to raise an army of the undead. And everyone knows the weakness of the undead is fire. He needs to destroy us because we're the biggest threat to him. Then you're not safe here either. You better come back to my base so we can figure out a plan to stop this. On days 11 through 14, I started expanding my base to make room for my new fire villager friend. Just like me, he was perfectly suited to a fireproof stone house. I built rooms for him and me and another room where we could hang out together. But this took a lot of stone and I soon needed to leave the base and mine more. I returned to the mine near the druid's cabin and even though it was exhausted, it still contained some materials. While I was gathering more stone, I suddenly felt that cold feeling again. Oh no, does this mean the necromancer is behind me again? Not quite, Zozo. I'm merely one of his servants. He brought me back to life, so I will serve his every order, including destroying you! It was the Black Death, a plague doctor brought back from the dead. I drew my sword and prepared to battle, but by then, the Black Death was already on me. He hit me and took out some hearts. This guy was way more powerful than me. I ran further into the mine, hoping to find some kind of escape route. But the Black Death was gaining on me. I needed some kind of advantage. Wait, is that a chest? It was a chest. Maybe something in there can save me. I opened up the chest and found a fire aspect enchantment inside. This would give my sword flaming strikes. Perfect. I quickly used the anvil next to the chest to apply the enchantment to my sword. Take this, Black Death. Boom, that got him. The Black Death was set on fire and went running back out of the cave. Fire really does scare off the undead. Safe from the Black Death for now, I traveled back to my base and started making the wall even taller. But now, knowing just how effective fire was against the undead, I made some flaming torches to put on the wall. This should keep out any uninvited guests.
On day 15, I went to check on the fire villager and make sure he was settling in nicely. I know from first-hand experience, it isn't easy to be a fire creature. I find it very comfortable in here, Zozo. Thank you. It's much nicer than having to stay in some damp old cave all day. So, tell me, what's the deal with this Lochnar guy? Everyone's been telling me that he's trying to raise some kind of army of the undead. Who is he? Everything you've heard is true, but there's more. People say that Lochnar is over a thousand years old, and because he's already dead, he can't be destroyed. Centuries ago, he was defeated by a legendary hero and locked up in the swamp of vileness. But somehow, he came back again, and he's trying to finish what he started all those years ago, making an army of the undead so powerful that he'll rule the world forever. Can the legendary hero come back to defeat him? It sounds like we really need him right now. That was a long time ago, Zozo. The legendary hero is probably extremely old now, if he's even alive. No, if we want to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer, we need to find a new hero. Like who? Well, like you, Zozo. You survived an encounter with him and saved me back in the cave. No way. Have you seen me? I'm just a little fire Godzilla. The only reason I survived was because he said I was too weak to be worth destroying. I'd stand no chance against him in a real fight. Do you think I could survive a fight with Lochnar? I think I'd need to get a lot stronger first. On days 16 to 19, I started putting together a plan with the Fire Villager. If Lochnar is destroying fire creatures because he knows they're a threat to his undead army, we better gather up as many fire creatures as we can. Great idea, Zozo. If memory serves, Lochnar's undead minions were keeping a Blaze prisoner in an underground cavern near here. Then I guess I better go rescue him. After hours of searching the forest, I found a secret entrance to an underground area, sneakily hidden among some trees. Hopefully I'm not too late to help the blaze down there. I rushed through the entrance. I made my way into the insides of the underground cavern and took a look around, trying not to draw too much attention to myself. I saw a lava river running through the bottom of the cavern, so my fire wasn't too out of place here. Wait, are those wither skeletons? They were! A bunch of wither skeletons were scattered everywhere along the path leading deeper into the cavern. They must be guarding the prison cell where the blaze is. I ran in with my new fire aspect sword and started to fight them off as I went deeper and deeper into the cavern. After I took most of them, I unleashed my fire Godzilla roar. It scared some of the wither skeletons so bad, they ran off faster than their bones could shake. Clearly, all of this fighting was worth some pretty great XP because I grew to almost twice my size with almost twice the armor and twice the hearts. Maybe I can be strong enough to take on Lochnar with the right training. But first, I broke open the prison with my iron pickaxe and freed the blaze. Thanks for getting me out of there. It was really starting to get stuffy. Don't mention it, buddy. How did you get captured? Well, I was out here searching for the Kyther of Light when I got ambushed by all those skeletons. Huh? You were looking for what? The Kyther of Light. It's the weapon that the legendary hero used to defeat Lochnar all those years ago. It's said to be the most powerful weapon against the undead in the world. Oh, wow. Then I should probably start looking for it, too. Come back to my base. I want to know more. On days 20 to 22, Blaze and I returned to the base, only to see it being attacked by a horde of zombies. Even the torches I'd added to the walls didn't seem to scare them off. Lochnar was making some really tough undead for us to face. Thankfully, with Blaze at my side, the fight didn't last long. With his flames and my fire sword, we were able to take on the zombies and send them back from once they came. So long, you undead meanies. It feels so good to be free and fighting again. Glad you're back in the groove, Blaze. But while the zombies weren't too difficult to defeat, this incident did make me realize our base needed some better defense. Or at least something to scare off potential attackers. That's when I had a great idea for the statue. The perfect thing to keep the undead away. I started working on the base of the statue with excitement. This is sure to keep the mobs at bay once it's done. Can you tell what it's gonna be? And if you want more adventures like this, subscribe to Zozo, because believe me, the best is yet to come. With Blaze here at the base, I've still got to do one more thing, add a new room for him. With me, Blaze, and the Fire Villager all together, we're a fiery force to be reckoned with. On days 23 to 26, the base came under attack worse than ever before. I woke up to find the base surrounded by mutant skeletons, who were bigger, faster, and stronger than even wither skeletons. I ran out with my fire aspect sword and started attacking them, one by one. Each mutant skeleton took several hits with the sword to down. These guys were tougher than any grunt enemy I would faced so far. A little help here, guys? Luckily for me, Blaze and the fire villager were there to help. With the three of us working together, we were able to drive off the remaining mutant skeletons back into the woods. 
That'll teach you to attack our base, skellies. Oh look, one of the mutant skeletons dropped a bow. Yes. That's perfect. I needed a good long range weapon for my arsenal. Hmm, what should I do next? Zozo. Yes, please? Now we've fought off the mutant skeletons, you should start exploring the deep dark woods for the Kyther of Light. We need it to defeat Lochnor the Necromancer. Good idea, Blaze. I journeyed out into the deepest, darkest part of the forest, knowing it would be the exact kind of place where Lochnor's minions would be waiting for me. And I was right, but I wasn't the only one. There was a fire elemental being surrounded by mutant zombies. The strongest zombies yet. Lucky for me, I had my new bow. I pulled it out, keeping a distance as I fired arrows at the mutant zombies. They seemed so shocked by my surprise attack, they retreated further into the dark of the forest. I'd saved the fire elemental. Want to come back to my base, little buddy? I'm collecting fire creatures. He seemed eager, so we headed back to the base. I built a new room to house the fire elemental, and built in a new base defense. Large holes dug into the ground around the base, so any stumbling zombies thinking of attacking would fall right in. I'm feeling safer already. On days 27 to 31, I started off by asking Blaze to tell me everything he knows about the Kyther of Light, seeing as it may be our best chance to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. It's an ancient weapon, Zozo, supposedly created by a powerful group of sorcerers, for if there was ever a great evil they needed to strike down. The legend goes that only someone pure of heart can wield the Kyther. To a being of evil, it's useless. But how can I find it? Even the most powerful weapon in the world is only useful if it's in our hands. Hmm. Perhaps the legendary hero would have hidden the Kytha in the last place the undead would think to look. The Nether. Oh no, the Nether? That's one of the most dangerous places out there. I guess if it's the only place I can find the Kytha, it's off to the Nether I go. With my sword and my bow, I set off for an old Nether portal in the woods. It's now or Nether. Yeah, bad joke, sorry. On the other side of the portal, it was all flames and lava. A fire Godzilla honestly looked kind of at home here. What didn't look at home was a huge, scary pigless, running straight towards me. You must be Zozo. I guess you're here looking for the Kyther of Light. Brave kid. And I guess you're here to find the Kyther too, before I can find it. You're a smart kid too, but I've got orders direct from Lochnar. Only one of us is leaving the nether. Let's go. I tried to draw my bow, but the pigless was too fast for me. I was lucky enough to pull out my sword just in time to counter his attack. Before he knew it, I hit him back and eventually managed to hit him in a way and made him touch lava, and due to that he screamed a bit and moved away. You're tougher than you look, but I'll get you next time, you little twerp. And with that, he ran off into the depths of the nether. On days 32 to 35, I traveled deeper into the nether, leaving the wastes and entering the crimson forest. Wow, this place is super scary. If the legendary hero really hid the Kyther here, he must have been one tough warrior. The Nether has some of the scariest mobs around, but I was surprised to see a familiar face amongst all the trees and lava. It was a baboon, just like the one I met on my first day here. Hey, aren't you the one who burned down my tree? I'm sorry, Mr. Baboon. It was an accident. I'm a fire Godzilla. Sometimes I burn stuff down. Whatever. It doesn't matter now. What are you doing in the Crimson Forest? I'm looking for the Kyther of Light to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, you too? He attacked my family with some zombies. I heard the Kyther might be hidden in the Soul Sand Desert. Let's travel together. We have better odds. Sounds good to me, Mr. Baboon. We traveled together to the Soul Sand Desert, which was every bit as bleak and barren as the name suggests. I then noticed Lochnar the Necromancer standing on top of a floating island. Hello again, Zozo, was it? Nothing about you was particularly memorable. You're all smug now, Lochnar, but you won't be when we find the Kyther and defeat you. You won't be able to find anything when you're dead. Suddenly, the ground below me and Mr. Baboon began to shake. I drew my bow and fired at Lochnar, but he didn't even flinch. It was useless. If we couldn't escape, we'd be done for. That's when I had an idea. I turned and fired my bow at one of the gas. That should get the attention of him and his ghastly friends. With Lochnar preoccupied with the ghast, Mr. Baboon and I ran away, back towards the nether portal. That was some quick thinking back there, Zozo. You really saved our skins. I couldn't have done it without you. Come back to the base with me. You can join our anti-Lochnar squad. And with that, we exited the nether. On days 36 to 39, I returned back to the base with the Baboon. I built him a little treehouse because he didn't find the stone fortress as comfy as me and my fire creature friends. I gathered my new basemates together, the fire villager, Blaze, the fire elemental, and the baboon. I needed to hear their thoughts on my hunt for the Kyther. 
It wasn't in the nether waste, the crimson forest, or the soul sand desert. If the kyther really is hidden in the nether, where could it be? You're telling me you didn't check the basalt deltas? The basalt deltas? What's that? It's the most dangerous place in the nether, Zozo. If the legendary hero really didn't want the kyther to be found, that'd be the best place to hide it. The most dangerous place in the nether? I can't go there yet. The rest of the nether was already dangerous enough. If the kyther was really in the basalt deltas, I needed to get stronger to get there. And I needed a little more inspiration. That's why I started working more on the statue. I must say, it's coming along quite nicely. From days 40 to 43, Blaze approached me, knowing I was feeling nervous about going back into the nether. Look, Zozo, the nether is a scary place. I know, I used to live there. But sometimes, when you can't fight your way through, you need to sneak. But Blaze, I can't sneak. I'm a fire Godzilla. I'm too easy to spot. I know, I know. But that's where my new plan comes in. There's a potion recipe hidden in a book I left in a lava canyon near here. If you can go get it for me, I'll make you a potion you'll find extremely useful. So that's exactly what I did. I found my way to the underground lava canyon. It was really hot down there, but thankfully, fire Godzillas don't mind the heat. There had to be a chest down there somewhere. If someone left a book down here on its own, it'd just burn up. But my thoughts were interrupted when suddenly, a huge serpent tried to grab me. It was a heck of a jump scare. I'm not on the menu, so slither on by, you reptile. I managed to hit it and knock it into the fiery depths below. That will teach you to mess with a fire Godzilla. As I continued to explore, I saw the chest tucked away in a corner. Let's take a look inside. A book! Jackpot! I then proceeded to leave the lava canyon and make my way back to the base. I gave the book over to Blaze and he made me a potion. This right here is a potion of invisibility. Wow. It might make your journey into the basalt deltas a little less dangerous. Thanks Blaze, this is perfect. On days 40 to 49, I made my way back to the nether portal deep in the forest. Here goes nothing. After landing in the nether, I made my way through to the basalt deltas. My friends weren't kidding when they said this place was dangerous. It looks impossible to even build here. I took the potion of invisibility and started to sneak through. There were sheer cliffs everywhere. I had to be careful so that I didn't fall. Help me, please, someone help me. Oh no, is that an illager? What's he doing in here? And why is he surrounded by endermen? I can't just leave him like that. I need to help him, even if it means wasting my invisibility. Still keeping my distance, I pulled out my bow. I opened fire at the endermen, causing them to teleport away. Yes. That gave me a window to get the illager out of there. Come with me if you want to live. Me and the illager ran for the hills until we were out of the basalt delta and back in the much safer soul sand valley. Thank you, kind stranger. You saved me. How can I ever repay you? You can tell me everything you know about the Kyther of Light. I need it to defeat Lochnar the Necromancer. Wait, the Kyther of Light? That reminds me of an old poem I used to hear all the time when I was a kid. Who seeks the Kyther, brave and true, venture into the forest blue. The forest blue? Wait, that sounds like the warped forest. It's the only place in the nether I haven't checked. Come with me, we'll go find it. On days 50 to 53, me and my new friend the Illager made our way into the warped forest, one of the slightly nicer parts of the nether. I might have even enjoyed it if we weren't ambushed by that pigless I fought earlier. Hey, looky here, it's that dweeb, Zozo. Name calling? Really? That's just uncalled for, man. No, Zozo, what's uncalled for is you being here. Me and the rest of Lochnar's boys have already found the Kyther, and it's far away from here. You're gonna get destroyed in the nether for nothing. That's it, you're going down, Pigless. But Pigless pulled a dirty trick. He didn't go for me, he went straight for the Illager, taking him down immediately. No, you can't do that. I can do whatever I want. Let's tango, Zozo. We clashed again, but this time I was stronger than before. I dodged his attacks easily, and with a few well-placed strikes from my fire sword, Pigless was done for. With him gone, I was all alone in the nether again. Maybe Pigless had lied about them taking the Kyther. I had to explore and find out. There was a bastion remnant, an ancient ruined fortress nearby, and it seemed like the exact kind of place the legendary hero might have hidden the Kyther. Instead, all I found was a great beast cowering in the shadows. Is the Pigless gone? That guy dragged me along with him to help him find the Kyther. Most of the rest of our team was destroyed by nether mobs. It was horrible. It's okay, I defeated the Pigless. You said he made you work for him. Do you have any idea where they may have taken the Kyther? Uh, tough to say. I think Pigless mentioned something about taking it back to the camp. He probably meant the one in the wasteland, back outside the nether. Perfect, so at least I know where to look next. Let's get out of here. Wait, 
Before you go, you deserve a reward for taking out that jerk pigless. I was gonna use it myself, but here, it's a knockback enchantment. Your strikes will knock back your enemies now. Oh, finally, some good luck. From days 54 to 57, I returned to my base and started making some adjustments. I added some guard towers so that we could spot any incoming threats faster. Just as I finished repairing and adding the knockback enchantment to my iron sword, the fire villager staying in the base approached me, looking very worried. Zozo, I need a hand. I've been looking into it, and I've seen that a mutant zombie is skulking out in the forest outside. You should probably go take care of it while I'm working on an extremely important potion. This would be the perfect opportunity to try my new knockback ability. Yes. I ran out into the forest, and just as the fire villager had told me, there was a mutant zombie making its way towards our base. I needed to put a stop to it. Come on, mutant zombie, you're no match for me. And I was right. With the knockback enchantment on my fire sword, I defeated it in no time and headed back to the base. Great work, Zozo. And here's your reward. I made a potion of slow falling. When you take it, it eliminates fall damage. You never know when that'll come in handy. On days 58 to 62, I continued work on the statue. I was really pleased with how it was coming along. Can you guess what it is yet? Suddenly, I heard the baboon yell out in panic from his treehouse. Guys, something is coming towards us. I looked out and saw a mob coming towards us. Creepers, courtesy of Lochnar the Necromancer. This is bad, this is really bad. But before we could do anything, the first wave of creepers had already hit. Several of them exploded, taking out huge chunks of the defensive wall, and others started crawling through the new gaps. Uh -oh. I decided to rush in and finally get rid of the creeper menace. They started exploding again, taking out chunks of the base. By the time I managed to turn the tide of the fight, huge portions of our base had already been destroyed. When I had the advantage, the last surviving creeper ran off back into the forest. The fight was over for now. We need to start rebuilding immediately. Blaze, Fire Villager, wait, where's Baboon? That's when we realized the Creepers had blown up Baboon's treehouse with Baboon inside of it. From days 63 to 66, hungry for fiery vengeance, I followed the last remaining Creeper back into the woods. You and your friends aren't going to get away with destroying Mr. Baboon. I chased him into the forest and saw him disappear down into an underground cavern. I was so angry, I didn't even think about how dangerous it could be to chase a creeper into an enclosed place. I hopped down into the cavern, but the creeper was nowhere to be seen. Instead, I found a book laying on the ground containing a secret note. Invade the base and destroy them all. Any survivors must return to the camp in the desert. G-O-A-W. G-O-A-W? Who's that? Wait, the camp in the desert. That's where they must be keeping the Kyther of Light. Yes. It was only then that I looked up and saw the creeper crawling quickly towards me. No time to think. On pure instinct, I pulled out my bow and fired. Boom! The creeper exploded, taking out a portion of the cavern. Lucky for me, thanks to the quick reflexes, I was out of the blast zone. From days 67 to 70, I traveled for two days all the way out to the desert. It was a really tough journey, but by the end, I finally saw the camp. Yes. It was a cabin surrounded by campfires, with a ghostly figure floating around it. It looked like the ghost of an ancient warrior. Lochnar the Necromancer must be able to raise skeletons, zombies, and ghosts. Wait, ghost of ancient warrior? That must be G-O-A-W, the one who wrote the note. He must be a pretty big deal. As I got close, I noticed there was a gorge in the desert just outside the camp. Better not fall in. I drew my bow and fired at the ghost, but predictably, the arrow went straight through him. That's when he threw through the air and lunged at me. He didn't even talk, he was all action. I managed to dodge and strike back with my sword, but he parried. This guy was a better fighter than anyone I'd ever faced. I didn't even know if I could defeat him. That's when I had an idea. If I'm not strong enough to beat him yet, I can still trick him. Before he could attack me again, I quickly drank my potion of slow falling. Then, when he attacked me again, I jumped back and fell into the gorge. To him, it looked like I fell to my doom, but thanks to the potion, I was just fine. When the ghost finally floated away, I climbed back up to the top. Kyther of Light, here I come! On days 71 to 74, I was finally able to make my way into the cabin being guarded by the ghost of the ancient warrior. Except, the Kyther wasn't there. The cabin was empty. All I heard was the echoing laughter of Lochnar the Necromancer. He was always a few steps ahead. Once again, it all been for nothing. I made the long trek back to my damaged base, empty-handed. On days 75 to 78, I came back to the base and noticed how damaged it really was. It was still heavily damaged from the creeper assault, and I needed to start the repairs immediately, so I did just that. I felt terrible knowing that now Mr. Baboon is gone, I didn't need to rebuild the treehouse. 
As I finished up the repairs, the fire villager approached me. Hey, Zozo. I just wanted to say I'm sorry you didn't find the Kyther, but I know you're strong enough to beat Lochnar anyway. I figured this might help. That's when he handed me a diamond sword with fire aspect, the strongest weapon I'd ever had my hands on. Wow, thanks, fire villager. It may not be the Kyther of Light, but it's the next best thing. And it turns out that the diamond sword couldn't have come at a better time, because suddenly, the ghost of the ancient warrior had returned, and he was flying at me. Guess it's time for a rematch. But this time, I didn't need any cheap tricks to take him down. Using my new diamond sword, I dodged his blows and struck him again and again, until he burst into ghost vapor and disappeared. I immediately started growing larger and larger, as well as doubling my hearts. But it wasn't just that. With my new size, I gained Godzilla strength, making all my close range attacks three times as powerful. Just then, the fire villager ran up to me. You did it, Zozo. You defeated the ghost of the ancient warrior. That's amazing. Wait, Zozo, I found this where the ghost vaporized. Huh? It looks like a notebook. The latest note read, Lochnar is nearly at his full power. The final arrangements are being put into place. Destroy Zozo and the Druid. Wait, the Druid from the cabin? He's involved in this too? On day 79 to 84, I knocked on the door of the Druid's cabin to find out how he was involved in all of this. Just like when I first met him, he wasn't eager to have me as a visitor. Keep your distance, Fire Godzilla. You're even bigger than last time, and my house is very flammable. I don't want to burn your house down, Druid, but I know someone who does. I've seen instructions from Lochnar the Necromancer. He wants to destroy me and you. What does he have against you? Ugh, Lochnar again? I thought I was done with that guy. What do you mean? I defeated him a few hundred years ago and sealed him away. I figured he'd stay gone for good, but I guess not. Wait, does that mean you're the legendary hero? I was, sure, but then I retired to become a druid. It's a much easier life. And besides, you should be fine. As long as you have the Kaithar, he won't be that hard to defeat. But he has the Kaithar. Oh, oh, okay. This could be bad. After our conversation, the druid led me back out into the forest to find another nether portal. He'd hid another weapon in the nether all those years ago as backup, if ever the Kaithar fell into the wrong hands. But when we arrived at the side of the portal, it had already been destroyed. This isn't good. If Lochnar destroyed the nether portal, it means he doesn't need it anymore. He's reaching the full height of his powers. What do we do now? Well, from where I'm standing, the only option is to- An arrow shot out of the woods, hitting the druid and destroying him before he could even finish his sentence. No, this can't be happening. I turned to see a small gang of skeletons emerge out of the thicket behind us. As they ran at me, I made short work of them with my diamond fire sword. But now, I was out of options and out of time. There was only one thing left to do. I need to find the Swamp of Vileness and destroy Lochnar myself. On days 85 to 89, I made my way out to the snowy landscapes of the north, where I finally found the great beast I'd met back in the nether. As far as I could tell, he would be the only one who could tell me where to find the Swamp of Vileness and finally track down Lochnar the Necromancer himself. I know where to find it, but it won't be easy. It's beyond the forest, but you can only go at night. And that's the thing, that creep is strongest at night. So if you're going to take him on, you better be well defended. That's a useful tip. Thanks, Great Beast. From days 90 to 94, I decided to take the Great Beast's advice and armor up. I used my iron pickaxe to mine some diamonds and turned them into a full set of diamond armor, helmet, chest plate, leggings, and boots. But I didn't want to stop there. I needed some enchantments to really make sure I could take a punch from Lochnar and his evil army of the undead. I gave myself the protection enchantment. That makes my armor twice as durable against close range attacks and projectile protection, which kept me safe from ranged attacks. Let's see Lochnar take me on now. From days 95 to 97, I finally finished the statue. Its flame could be seen from miles away and should keep all the bad mobs away from my base once and for all. It was a beacon of hope for all fire mobs, a bright, brilliant beacon that could be seen from miles away. And that's when I realized why I had to take on Lochnar and his undead minions. I could either use my fire powers to destroy, like when I accidentally burned down Mr. Baboon's tree, or I could use it to be a beacon of hope, to fight back against evil whenever I can, because it's the right thing to do. So it's exactly what I was going to do. On day 98, I spoke to the fire villager in Blaze about my plan to attack the Swamp of Violence and finally take down Lochnar. You can't do this alone, Zozo. You're strong, but Lochnar is so powerful, and he has an entire army. He's right, Zozo. Why don't you let us come with you? Surely we'll be stronger together. I can't put you at risk like that. 
You need to stay here as backup, in case Lochnar defeats me and his undead army escapes. But I can't let that happen. Trust me, no matter what, I'm going to defeat Lochnar and put an end to his evil reign of terror. With that, I exited the base, but was suddenly stopped by someone I haven't met before. Uh, can I help you? He said nothing and dropped me a note and left. The note said, if you want to help me defeat Lochnar, you should subscribe to Zozo and check out our other adventures. You can even suggest what you want to see next down in the comments. Hmm, all right. I'm sure with the help of you guys, I'll actually manage to defeat Lochnar. On day 99, following the instructions of the Great Beast, I made my way to the Swamp of Vileness in the dead of night. It was every bit as creepy as I'd imagined. Mist hung low, the mossy skeletons, minions of Lochnar, were patrolling back and forth. I didn't have any more potions of invisibility. I needed to fight my way through. Okay, skellies, come get me. I want to speak to your manager. That got their attention. Suddenly, waves of mossy skeletons started running at me while others fired bows at me from a distance. Thankfully, with my enchanted diamond armor, I could deflect most of the damage, and my enchanted diamond sword could destroy them in one strike each. But that wasn't the problem. The mossy skeletons may have been weak, but every single time I defeated them, more just kept coming out of the fog. Don't you guys know when to quit? They are the least of your worries, Sozo. It was Lochnar. I could hear his voice, but I couldn't see him. It was like he was everywhere around me. If you survive this onslaught, come a little further and meet me in my crypt. It will be the last thing you ever do. I wasn't going to let him get away with that. No matter how many skeletons he threw at me, I'd keep fighting to the very end. With my sword at the ready and my flames brighter than ever, I moved in towards the crypt of Lochnar. On day 100, I fought through the mossy skeletons and reached the crypt, which looked like a big, rickety pile of ancient stone. But there were stronger enemies waiting for me there. Mutant skeletons and mutant zombies came running at me, but my sword was ready. I hit them again and again, sending one after another down. But just like the mossy skeletons, more of them kept coming. I'm really starting to get sick of you guys. I unleashed a mighty Fire Godzilla roar that could be heard across all of the Swamp of Vileness and it knocked out all of the undead at once. It was just me in the crypt, so I pulled out my iron pickaxe and started destroying it, just to spite Lochnar. But just then, I fell down deeper into the crypt. Oh my gosh, there it is! That's the Kyther of Light! This is where he's been keeping it! I grabbed the Kyther. Now, I was ready to take on Lochnar. I wouldn't be so confident, Zozo. Boom! Lochnar appeared behind me, more powerful than he'd ever been before. Do you really think you can beat this? Lochnar began to grow as his power increased, becoming a huge, monstrous super necromancer. Like this, he really did look like he could take over the world. But I wasn't done yet. And do you really think you can beat this? I summoned up all of my power and channeled it. My flames got brighter as I grew, taking in the power of the Kyther of Light. I became Ultra Fire Godzilla, with 30 hearts and almost unbreakable armor. You can't do this. It isn't fair. Life isn't fair, Lochnar. Let's go. Lochnar threw everything at me, hitting me again and again, but getting nothing. Now it's my turn. With one mighty swing of the Kyther, with all my power behind it, Lochnar was destroyed once and for all, never to raise another undead minion again. Safe at last, I returned to the base to celebrate with the Fire Villager and Blaze. Things were finally looking up for all of us. On day one, I spawned in as Darth Vader. Hey, wait a second, what gives? This isn't Darth Vader, I'm Anakin Skywalker. Wow. I had spawned in the desert, surrounded by Tusken Raiders. But even worse, all around me was nothing but sand. Oh man, I hate sand. It's coarse, it's rough, and it gets everywhere. Suddenly, before I could get the sand out of my boots, this creepy old guy appeared in front of me. Who are you? <laughs> I am Darth Sidious, Dark Lord of the Sith. So the Jedi prophecy says that you're the chosen one who will bring balance to the Force. I don't believe it. I bet that I can corrupt you and bring you over to the dark side as my new apprentice. And with a blast of his deadly lightning, he destroyed the nearby camp of Tuscans. All of them. He destroyed all of them. I'll never join you, Sidious. Oh, we'll see, my new apprentice. I'm sure that within a hundred days, you'll fall to the dark side. Otherwise, you won't survive for long out here. And like that, he had disappeared once again, leaving me alone. Oh no, there's no way I'm turning to the dark side. But someone needs to stop Sidious. 
I'm not gonna beat him like this. I need to do a lot of training to stand any chance at defeating him. On day two, I started making my way through the desert toward the Tuscan village. I thought I'd try to see if there was anything left behind that I could use. I realized I only had five hearts, so I had to be careful. Just then, I was discovered by a patrolling group of battle droids. Darth Sidious must have sent them after me. Halt. Who goes there? Ah, don't hurt me! I'm unarmed! It's the Jedi we were sent here to find. Blast him. Roger, roger. The droids attacked me, and I tried to punch my way out of there. I didn't have anything I could use in my inventory to fend them off, and without any Jedi training, I wasn't going to do much damage at all. Oh no, I can't die yet. In the nick of time, somebody came zooming up to me on a speeder. Hello there. Quick, climb aboard. I hopped on, and he took off, leaving Darth Sidious's battle droids in the dust. Whew, thanks for rescuing me. What's your name? I am Jedi Master, Obi-Wan Kenobi. On day three, Obi-Wan took me to Mos Eisley, a town nearby. The whole place was full of all kinds of aliens and droids. Wow, this place seems cool. Still way too much sand, though. Obi-Wan then took me to Yoda, the head of the Jedi Council. Help you, can we, young Link? I quickly explained that I needed to train in the ways of the Force before my 100 days were over, so Darth Sidious couldn't turn me into his apprentice. Hmm, wary of the dark side you must be. Mindful of your fear, yes? My fear? I'm not afraid. Good, for fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. At any rate, you won't last long on your own. Here's some supplies to get you started on your journey. There's food, some arrows, a bow, and an axe. An axe? But what about my lightsaber? When do I get one of those? You must master patience to begin with. Well, all right then. How do I do that? Kaiju, Obi-Wan will. I will teach you everything I know. I know the ways of the Force, thanks to the teachings of Master Yoda here. That would be amazing, thanks! Does that make me your Padawan? Soon. Listen to Obi-Wan, you will. But beware of the dark side. If once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. Consume you, it will. Don't worry, Master Yoda. I'll be careful. I hopped on Obi-Wan's speeder, and we left as a team. On days four and five, it was finally time to start my training. I cut down some trees and gathered enough wood to make a crafting bench. Afterwards, I made myself a set of wooden tools, ready to go and find some stone. I mined for cobblestone and then upgraded to stone tools as quickly as possible. By the time I was done, the twin suns were beginning to peak over the horizon. Patience. Be mindful, youngling. I listened to Obi-Wan as he taught me, although I was still eager to hurry up and become a Jedi. We worked together to build a base. I cleared out some of the stone and built a room for both Obi-Wan and I to stay in using the materials I had gathered so far. Good job. You've taken your first steps into becoming a great Jedi. You've done well, my Padawan. As we started winding down for the evening, Obi-Wan made some food for us. I ate some, transforming me into a Jedi Padawan learner. I now had 10 hearts. Whoa, I definitely think I'm getting stronger. There's no way I'll fall to the dark side. I'll be a Jedi in no time. You've still got a lot of training ahead of you, but for now, let's get some rest. With the base prepped and night beginning to fall once again, we settled in. I couldn't wait to continue my training in the morning. On days six through eight, we explored more of the desert, looking for more materials. Back inside the caves, we found more of those battle droids terrorizing another droid. He looked pretty different from them, and they were still giving him a hard time. Hey, leave him alone! Battle droids didn't listen, so I shot them down with my bow and arrow. I still hadn't finished learning the ways of the Force, but I had to do something. They charged me and our battle began! I used a combination of my axe and bow to fend the droids off, but the battle was tough. They weren't strong, but there were a lot more of them than me. They cornered me, hitting me into a wall. Wait a second. Surrender, Jedi. We have you surrounded. I have a bad feeling about this. Just gotta remember what Obi-Wan said. Patience. Our battle continued, and pretty soon it was down to just a few battle droids. Using all of my strength, I pulled back my bow, destroying them all swiftly. Once they were taken care of, I checked on that other droid they'd been hassling. Why, thank you so much for your help. I am C-3PO, Human Cyborg Relations. Nice to meet you. Do you mind if I call you 3PO? Of course not, but I need your help. My companion R2-D2 and I were separated. I'm only a protocol droid, sir. I'm not designed to fight. And goodness knows what will happen to R2 on his own. Leave it to me. I'm sure we'll find your friend. On days 9 and 10, 3PO and I set off to try and find his friend. Even though we had to travel pretty far, we could at least retrace 3PO's steps back to where he and R2 got separated. Soon, we reached the cave where 3PO remembered seeing his fellow droid. 
this is the place. Oh, do be careful, Master Zozo. I told R2 not to go, but he's faulty, malfunctioning, kept babbling about his mission. I told him he'd be breaking down within a day, the nearsighted scrap pile. I thought you two were friends. Oh, we are, sir. I'm terribly worried about him. I have a bad feeling about this. Keeping my axe at the ready, I snuck my way into the cave. The further I crept, I could hear the sounds of beeping somewhere off in the distance. Hey, R2? Is that you? There was no answer, so I kept searching the cave. That's when I came across R2, surrounded by even more droids. They must have been more of Sidious's, but they looked a lot tougher and meaner than the ones I'd faced before. They had 3PO's friend held prisoner. I tried to sneak closer quietly, but R2 was so desperate to be freed that he couldn't help getting excited when he spotted me coming to rescue him. The commando droids were alerted, and they began their attack. I tried my best to fend them off with my axe, but they all had weapons of their own, and I didn't stand a chance. I had to run, or else they would have finished me off for sure. When I reached the cave entrance, 3PO was still there, waiting for me. Oh goodness, you're back already. Tell me the bad news. Has poor R2 been deactivated, or smashed into who knows what? No, he's alright. But the droids holding him are too strong. I'll have to come back after I've completed more of my training. Come on, you can stay with me and Obi-Wan. On days 11 and 12, I headed back to my base with 3PO following me closely. Once we had made it back safely in one piece, I started making a place for him to stay. I knew he'd probably still be down about his friend, so I hoped it might cheer him up, having a spot all of his own. I built him a room with a crafting bench and a bed. Even droids need a rest from time to time, right? Oh, thank you, Master Zozo. If it's alright with you, I think I'll power down for a while. Before I could reply, 3PO had shut himself off. Darn, I really needed to ask him about Sidious. That's when Obi-Wan entered the room. You have questions, Padawan? Oh hey, Master Obi-Wan! Yeah, I've been meaning to ask. What's the deal with the Sith? Look around you, Zozo. Everything that exists, all of it, is held together by the Force. The Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and binds the galaxy together. The Jedi Order serves the light side of the Force, but the Sith seek power for themselves. And that is the way of the dark side. Well, I better keep making myself stronger with the light side. That way, I won't ever become Darth Sidious's apprentice. After talking with Obi-Wan, I went out to mine for more materials. I came across plenty of iron and coal. Yes. I had enough to make a furnace and smelted the iron, then used it to craft some iron tools and boots. And I even crafted an iron sword, way stronger than the axe I'd been using. Afterwards, I built an armory where I could store all of my new tools. On days 13 to 15, I was eager to get some more training done so I could keep getting stronger with the Force. So I talked to Obi-Wan to see what I could do to keep following the Jedi path. Well, I can only teach you so much. Experience is one of the wisest teachers there is. And as a Jedi, helping others is always our first priority. So I suggest you go in search of those who need your assistance, learn about the world, and through that, you will strengthen your connection with the Force. Okay, that doesn't sound too hard. Thanks, Master. I won't let you down. Remember, Zozo, a Jedi can feel the Force flowing through him at all times. When in doubt, always reach out with your feelings and trust in the Force to guide you. So I gathered up some more iron and crafted myself some armor for extra protection before heading out to explore the forest and find some people to help. Okay, where to start? Hello? Anyone here need a Jedi? I was searching for ages, but there was hardly anyone around. I did run into some Ewoks, but they didn't understand me when I asked if they needed any help, and they didn't seem to need anything anyway. Suddenly, I heard the sound of footsteps drawing near, and a voice yelled at me. You're the Jedi I've been sent to find. Sidious is going to pay me handsomely for bringing you back to him alive. It was a bounty hunter, sent to capture me for some quick credits. He attacked me, but I was prepared to take him on. I had the wisdom of Obi-Wan's Jedi training, and I was protected by my new armor too. Plus, with a new sword at the ready, I could fight back. I dodged his attack, then slashed at him, knocking him back. The bounty hunter was one tough nerf herder, but after trading slashes, I eventually was able to come out on top. I did it! I beat you! Then I noticed he dropped something, a potion of regeneration. Whoa, this couldn't have been better timed after a battle like that. Making my way back to the base, I used the Potion of Regeneration to heal any damage I sustained in the fight. Soon, I'm gonna be a full-blown Jedi. On days 16 to 19, I was really starting to feel like I was getting stronger, so I headed out to explore some more. After all, I wasn't a Jedi Knight yet, and I still needed to find people who needed my help. Despite searching, I didn't end up finding anyone in need. 
but I did come across an abandoned mine and decided to take a closer look inside. I found a chest someone had left there, and when I opened it up, I found an old diary. Wow. It was ancient, must have been there for quite some time, and written inside of it was the Sith Code. Wow. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The Force shall free me. Obi-Wan was right. Sith like Sidious are really selfish and power hungry. I'll have to get even stronger if I want to defeat him. The chest must have been some kind of trap though, because before I could leave, I was attacked by a squad of more battle droids. There's the Jedi. Blast him. Roger, roger. Lucky for me, my new armor protected me, and the droids were easy to destroy with my sword. They weren't as tough as that bounty hunter from before, so I fought them off and was able to defeat them in no time. On days 20 to 22, I decided to head back to Moss Eisley. If there were people to help, then I'd probably find them there. While on my way back, I saw some small buzz droids bothering some locals and chopping up their speeders. Even though the buzz droids were small, I was able to take them out nice and easy. I must really be getting the hang of this Jedi stuff. To say thanks for helping them out, the locals offered me some enchantments, specifically the protection and projectile protection enchantments. I can use these to upgrade my gear and my armor. With that taken care of, I was feeling strong enough to go back and fight the commando droids that were still keeping R2 prisoner back in that cave. Then, I could reunite him with 3PO. That's someone else I could help. Yes. Don't worry, R2. I came back, and I'm strong enough to get you out of here now. With my new armor and sword, I was able to hold my own against the squad of deadly commando droids. They were still some of the stronger droids I'd come across, and knocked me back. But I kept my swords at the ready, and kept fighting. None of them were expecting me to have trained this hard. They weren't ready to fight a true aspiring Jedi Knight. And just like that, those commando droids were nothing more than scrap. You're welcome, R2. Happy to help. Now come on, let's head back to the base to get you cleaned up. I'm sure 3PO's been worried about you. On days 23 to 26, I brought R2 back to my base and reunited him with 3PO. Here you go, 3PO. One adventurous little astromech droid, back safe and sound. Oh, thank you so much, Zozo. And as for you, R2-D2, don't start being sarcastic with me, you ungrateful little glob of tin. I've been worried sick about you. How rude. As a matter of fact, it is true. Now don't be ridiculous. I could hardly save you myself. I'm only a protocol droid after all. Stop that. Your lucky master Zozo here stepped in to help. If it was up to me, I'd have left you with those dastardly commando droids. You guys sure do have a weird friendship. Oh, stop it, R2. Now we just have to take refuge here and hope there aren't any more unsavory characters out there to turn us both into scrap. Don't worry. I'll protect you guys. Hey, I have an idea. 3PO, if you're still worried about danger, why don't I build us a watchtower? You and R2 can keep a lookout and see if you spot any more battle droids. A splendid idea, Master Zozo. So I started working on adding a tower to the base right away. Once that was all finished, I thought it might be handy to have some ranged weapons, in case we needed to take out any enemies from afar. Sure, Obi-Wan had told me a Jedi doesn't use things as clumsy or random as a blaster, but he couldn't be right all the time, could he? So I crafted plenty of arrows, keeping some on me, and loads of spares in a chest. Now I could defend my new friends in case of attack. On days 27 to 31, I decided to travel a little further than I had before, so I could gather some more materials, find more people who were in need of my help, and carry on my Jedi training. If I could help enough people, then maybe some of them would help me defend my base against the battle droids and Darth Sidious's other dangerous evildoers. My journey brought me to a watery area near the shores where there was a lot of rain. I could hardly see anything in the storm. While I was searching around the area, I came across some guys in white armor. They told me they were clone troopers, soldiers created as an army to fight alongside the Jedi and defend the Republic. The troopers seemed like they'd be a big help, so I sent them back to my base, and they marched off to go and help with the defenses. Next, I decided to gather some more stone. These are the stone shores, after all, that I could bring back to base to improve my defenses. Everything I crafted was helping me learn more and more about being a Jedi, and I was feeling stronger with the Force every minute. I'd be a Jedi Knight in no time. When I got back to the base, Master Yoda was there, and he seemed pretty concerned as he came up to me. Padawan Zozo, your help we require. Huh? Under attack, people are, by an army of battle droids. No, of course I'll help. Go with you, I will, and enlist the help of clones we shall. A grave and uncertain time this is, clouded by the dark side of the Force. The future has become. On days 32 to 35, we made our way off into the world to help people. 
There were battle droids everywhere. It could have only been the work of Darth Sidious. But lucky for us, we had the clone troopers with us too, watching our backs and ready to bring the fight to those droids. Yoda and I had to spring into action to save them. There were Gungan warriors trying to hold their own against the battle droids, but then a squad of destroyer droids rolled in. Don't worry, everyone. We're here to save you. Patience, Zozo. I rushed at them with my sword while Yoda followed me, and the clones helped out during the fight. But soon, Yoda was quickly surrounded by some of the destroyer droids, and in seconds they had the Jedi Master cornered. Uh -oh. Get away from him! I tried to fend them off so they didn't harm him, but I was no match for these droids. They destroyed Master Yoda! No! I couldn't believe it. I wanted to take my revenge. With the help of my clone friends, we defeated the rest of the destroyer droids and helped save the Gungans. But it was too late for the wisest Jedi Master. Even worse, I had let my anger get the better of me and taken revenge. I needed to be careful and remember Yoda's teaching so that I didn't fall to the dark side like Darth Sidious wanted. On days 36 to 39, I set off in search of someone who could help me. Things were still crazy. There were more and more droids showing up. A huge army that was too big for me and the clones to fight. We need to be able to protect people, but we're outnumbered. If only Yoda was still here, he'd know what to do. Oh, I know. I need to find someone else who's just as old and wise. Obi-Wan taught me that experience is the best teacher. So I started looking around for anyone who could help. That was when I came across this old man. His name was Palpatine, and he had been put in charge of the Senate while the droid army was still a threat. I'm so glad you turned to me for help, Zozo. You see, I don't think that the Jedi have enough trust in you. Why would you say that? Obi-Wan's been making sure I get proper training. Of course, I'm sure he is. Listen to me, I need help with something. If you can do something for me, I can offer you my guidance in return. Your guidance? Why? There are things the Jedi won't tell you, Zozo. But first, there are a group of droids sent by our enemies to endanger me. Please protect me from them. I was more than happy to help. After all, I'd already scrapped tons of droids before, so this was bound to be no trouble. I found them nearby, but I had been expecting some ordinary battle droids. These ones were Magna Guards. They were much, much stronger than anything I'd faced before. But I fought with all my might and struck them down one by one. Good, Zozo. Good. You've done well. You've done well. That's what they get for trying to harm you. Now, what were you saying before? The Jedi are keeping secrets? Why would they do that? Ah, well listen closely. I can help you if you want. Yes, please. Have you ever heard of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? It's a Sith legend, not a story the Jedi would ever tell you. So Palpatine started telling me a story of an old Sith Lord who'd learned the power to stop people from dying. Things were starting to get confusing. The Jedi told me the Sith were evil, and I was trying to avoid the dark side so I didn't become Darth Sidious' apprentice. But what if joining the Sith was a way I could keep people safe? On days 40 to 43, I decided to make a few improvements around the place. I added torches and bookshelves for extra light and to keep some Jedi texts to read on my downtime and continue my training. Once I was done, I checked in with the clone troopers who all seemed to be worked up about something. Hey, what's going on, guys? There's been a rebellion, sir. The Jedi are trying to overthrow Chancellor Palpatine. We need to alert the other clones. I couldn't believe it. Why were the Jedi trying to take over? I built a few signs to put up to warn people and get the clones to help out. And pretty soon, a whole squad of troopers had shown up, ready for the job. Yes. I had to make a barracks for the clone troopers, so I built it off my base and filled it with bunk beds so they would all have a place to sleep. One of the clones came to find me while I was working. Those Jedi traitors won't know what hit them. I heard a rumor about where Obi-Wan might have gone. You should go and track him down. And see if he can help us? Or see whose side he's on. Our intel suggests he escaped through a nether portal to the east. If you can journey to the nether, you might be able to find him. It almost sounded like it couldn't be true. Why would Obi-Wan do this? On days 44 to 49, I journeyed out to find my old master. I found the nether portal that the clone trooper told me about in the middle of the forest. I guess it's now or never. Gotta have faith in the force. I jumped into the portal and was transported to the nether. It was a strange and scary place, full of lava, fire, and hostile mobs. Why would Obi-Wan be hiding here? But I couldn't dwell on questions. I needed to keep tracking him, even through the nether. When I arrived at his coordinates, I couldn't see anyone at first, but then I saw a figure approaching me. Hello? 
I walked towards them, only to realize it was Palpatine. He had really been Darth Sidious all along. <laughs> I knew I could make you fall to the dark side and become my apprentice. Do you see the lies of the Jedi's teachings now? You're a Sith Lord. I should take you down right now. You've been causing so much chaos all over the place. Why do you even want me to be your apprentice anyway? Yes, give in to your hatred. If you strike me down, your journey to the dark side will be complete. And as for why, I only want the same thing you do. I want peace, a world without fighting or suffering. I want order, and the Jedi would stand in the way of that. But the Jedi believe in peace too. They want to be in control of everything themselves, and so they have to go. Henceforth, you shall be known as Darth Vader. Together, you and I will bring an end to the Jedi, my new apprentice. Now do what must be done, Lord Vader. Do not hesitate. Show no mercy. And with that, I transformed. The long, black cloak. The imposing height. The scary black helmet. I was no longer a Skywalker. I was the new Sith Lord, Darth Vader. He also dropped me a lightsaber. Huh? Wait, why is that? Darth Sidious dashed off, laughing, and in his place was my old master, Obi-Wan. Zozo, you have allowed this Dark Lord to twist your mind, and now you've become the very thing you swore to destroy. Don't lecture me, Obi-Wan. Palpatine told me that the Jedi are plotting to take over, and if you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. Obi-Wan had much more training as a Jedi than me. I didn't want to fight, but I had no other choice. So I drew my lightsaber and got ready for a fight. On days 50 to 53, I fought hard against my former Jedi Master. Sozo, Chancellor Palpatine is evil! You said that about the Sith too, but they can stop people from dying. What if, from my point of view, the Jedi are evil? Well, then you are lost. Our fight raged on. Obi-Wan was a skilled Jedi, but he had taught me everything he knew. I knew his fighting style, and there was no trick he could pull on me. Or so I thought. He was able to knock me down, but it wasn't enough. I got back up again, relying on all of my training and everything I had learned to block his attacks quickly. I had gotten a lot better at fighting droids, but I'd never thought I'd be fighting my old master. We fought and fought until eventually, I gave one more swing of my lightsaber and I defeated Obi-Wan. I did it! I won this battle! Hopefully that means there's no more to come. Hey wait, what's this? Huh? I looked on the ground where Obi-Wan fell at the end of our fight. There was a journal. Hey. This says that there are two more Skywalkers like me, and that once they get trained in the ways of the Force, they'll be able to defeat me and Darth Sidious. I better start getting ready for when that time comes. On days 54 to 57, I left the Nether and ventured off to find the other Skywalkers. I wasn't going to give up my search for the two of them, especially if they could help me overthrow the new Emperor and rule by my side. I had to keep looking and see if I could find them, or if it was all just another one of Sidious's traps. In the distance, I could see that someone had set up a camp nearby. As I got closer, I spotted a group of rebel soldiers all gathered around a campfire. Oh no! I have to stop them! I tried to hold back and keep myself out of sight. I drew my bow and started firing at the rebels, using the element of surprise to my advantage. Oh no! It's Lord Vader! We have to get out of here! Everyone run! And it worked! They began to scatter when I landed the first hit. Take that, you rebel scum! Instead of trying to calm them down, I decided to get right to the fighting instead. I couldn't help it. My anger was getting the better of me. I had really fallen to the dark side. I rushed in with my lightsaber and fought them with everything I had. Quick, let's get out of here! The rebels ran away, leaving me alone. Hey look, it's a sacred Jedi text. This will teach me even more ways to use the Force and how to get stronger. I used it and grew even stronger than before, and I gained two more hearts. With Obi-Wan slain and Darth Sidious more powerful than ever, I returned to my base and told the clone trooper the good news. Excellent work, Sith Lord Zozo. It seemingly is true what the prophecy said about you. You are destined to be the chosen one, the most powerful force user of all. That sounded pretty good to me.
On days 58 to 62, I worked on improving things at the base. Now that Obi-Wan was gone, it was mostly just me staying there, and that was kind of sad. So I decided to cheer myself up and make it even better. The clone troopers that had been living in the barracks now needed to become stormtroopers, so I needed a way to make more tools and new weapons for them. I worked on making a bigger crafting area and expanded the armory, so we'd have lots of extra storage space for the new equipment. Then I headed off to a nearby mine where I could find lots of diamonds. I dug deep down, and sure enough, there were plenty of diamonds to be found. I used an iron pickaxe to mine out as many diamonds as I could carry and took them back to the base. I used every single diamond and forged them into a brand new set of diamond armor, along with a pickaxe and a new sword to match. Next, I thought about gathering some extra food for the stormtroopers, so I crafted myself a fishing rod in case I had a chance to catch fish when I visited new areas. On days 63 to 66, Emperor Palpatine came to visit me at my base, which was quickly becoming my very own castle. What is thy bidding, my master? There has been a great disturbance in the Force, Lord Zozo. I have felt it too. We have a new enemy. The children of Skywalker must not be allowed to become Jedi. If they could be turned, they could be powerful allies. Yes, indeed. For now, build your strength, Lord Zozo. Gather resources. There is another cave nearby with plenty of diamonds to mine. Thank you. It shall be done, Master. I really missed my old master, Obi-Wan Kenobi, but it seemed like I was stuck with the Emperor for now. I set off to the next cave to start mining for even more diamonds. Inside, I saw a group of bounty hunters. I got ready to fight them, grabbing my lightsaber and leaping into action. Hey, it's Lord Zozo. Wait, you weren't looking for me? Huh? But I fought a bounty hunter before who tried to kill me. We were hired to help fight the rebels and track down the Skywalkers. We're gonna help you, as long as we get paid. Very well. There will be a substantial reward for the one who finds the Skywalkers. You are free to use any methods necessary, but I want them alive. No disintegrations. As you wish. We were tracking a group of rebels who might know where to find the Skywalkers. They're in an underground base somewhere in these caves. Return to my castle for now. I will deal with these rebel scum and come meet you when I am finished. On days 67 to 70, I traveled deeper into the caves in search of the underground base where the rebels were meant to be hiding. If I could find them, I might be able to learn of the Skywalkers' whereabouts and get to them before the Emperor did. If I can get them to join with me instead, then perhaps together we can overthrow Lord Sidious and rule the galaxy together. Before I could think about my plans anymore though, I spotted a smuggler and a Wookiee warrior in the caves. They must have been part of the Rebel Alliance. Maybe they knew where I could find the Skywalkers. I had heard that Wookiees were much stronger than an average person, so I would have to be careful. I started looking around for a way to sneak past, but the pair of them were blocking my path. There was no other way. I'll have to fight my way through. There's nothing else to do. So be it. I thought about how much danger I had already faced so far and how much worse Lord Sidious was. If I wanted to beat him in the end, then I had to fight. I attacked the pair of them. The smuggler and the Wookiee managed to dodge out of the way of my attacks. Should we look out? It's the Sith Lord Zozo. I decided to focus on one of them at a time, so I turned to the Wookiee and attacked him with my sword. He was pretty tough, but was knocked back when I got a good hit in. The smuggler tried to sneak up behind me, but I spun around and hit him too. It was a pretty intense battle, but eventually, I was able to win with the help of my shiny new diamond sword. Once they were defeated, they dropped some information about one of the Skywalkers. His name was Luke, and there was a map leading to his location. Now I just had to find him. On days 71 to 74, I started traveling toward the location on the map. As I was searching for Luke, I saw a strange message that someone had written on the map. It said, if you're enjoying this adventure, find more Zozo videos by searching for Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. And don't forget to like and subscribe. On my journey, I decided I would make a quick stop at a river to fish, hoping to catch some food for myself and some extra to bring back to the stormtroopers at my base. I caught a few fish, plenty to feed the stormtroopers and myself for the rest of my search. But then, Emperor Palpatine appeared before me. So, fishing on the job, Lord Zozo. You should be looking for Skywalker. We must turn him to the dark side if we are to survive. What if he can't be turned though, Master? He will. And once he does, he will be my newest apprentice. What about me? I know what you've been planning, Lord Zozo. You think you and young Skywalker can overthrow me, but neither one of you can stand against the full power of the dark side. Just as I pulled out my lightsaber, the Emperor attacked me with his deadly force lightning. Unlimited power! I tried my best, but it still wasn't strong enough to defeat him. I had to run away to save myself. 
but it seems like Palpatine let me get away. He knew I was scared of him and was using my fear against me. I just needed to stay alive to get stronger and find Luke, so I headed back to my base. On days 75 to 78, I got to work improving my base again. I had to make it even more secure, just in case Palpatine ever attacked the base itself. It was like I was losing all of my allies. Turning to the dark side is no fun at all. Luckily, I had a great idea to make an underground bunker beneath the main base, somewhere I could hide out if the Emperor came to attack before I was ready. I got to work on the bunker, and before long, I had a great big underground hideout to go to if the Emperor attacked before I was strong enough, or before I'd gotten Luke to help me beat him. After I was done, some of the Bounty Hunter gang came to me with a gift. It was a red lightsaber, a powerful weapon suited to a Sith Lord like me. We heard you were trying to overthrow the Emperor, so take this lightsaber to help you get stronger while you're searching for Skywalker. With my new weapons and the knowledge that other people believe in my quest to take down the Emperor, I grew bigger and gained more hearts. On day 79 to 84, I decided to test my new strength while I was trying to track down Luke again. I went out into the desert and found some Gamorreans to fight with. Time to try out my shiny new lightsaber. The vicious piggy aliens came at me with their axes, but I quickly knocked them back and took them all out. After I defeated the rest of the Gamorreans, I realized they had been keeping two familiar droids prisoner. R2 and 3PO. Is that you? To my surprise, it was my two old friends. It can't be. Oh, thank the maker, Master Zozo, it is you. Thank you for saving us from those ghastly Gamorreans. Oh, don't be rude, R2. Yes, I know he does look different, but he's still the same Zozo at heart. Hey, you're right. And now I'm much stronger, too. Say, can you guys help me find someone? Of course, sir. We'd be happy to help. I need to find Luke Skywalker. On days 85 to 89, I went back to my base while 3PO and R2 went to find out where Luke was. But when I got back, my castle was under attack by an army of stormtroopers. They had scout troopers with them and a huge ATST walker. This could only have been the work of the Emperor. He knew I wanted Luke's help to defeat him and was trying to smash up my base to stop me. There were so many of them, it was dangerous just trying to get close. Thankfully, I still had my bow and plenty of arrows that I had made earlier. I might be better with my lightsaber, but I'm still a mean shot. I hit a number of the scout troopers, causing the stormtroopers to turn heel and run. But the big ATST was still attacking my base. The walker was so much taller than me, I had to be careful if I wanted to take it down. One stomp and I would be gone. I rushed at the ATST, swinging my sword at its legs. If I could take out one of them, I could cause the whole walker to topple over and come crashing down. I had to stay calm, use the force, and remember all the lessons I had learned from Yoda and Obi-Wan, even though they weren't with me anymore. Patience, that's what Obi-Wan was always saying. With a few well-placed swings of my sword, the ATST was done for and fell right over to the ground. When it was over, someone appeared from nearby and came up to me. I knew there was still good in you. I turned around to see who it was, and even though we hadn't met before, I knew it was Luke. I was so happy to see him. On days 90 to 94, I headed off the same direction that the stormtroopers had run off in after causing so much destruction to my base. After what felt like hours of tracking, I found a cave. This has got to be where they're hiding out. I better take a look. I'll get those stormtroopers to tell me where the Emperor is hiding. I snuck into the cave and saw that it was empty, except for one strange figure standing alone, almost like he was waiting for me. He was dressed in black robes, similar to the Emperor but he had red skin and horns sticking out of his head. I could sense he was strong in the dark side of the Force. Who are you? I have gone by many names, but you may call me Maul. Darth Maul. My master, Lord Sidious, revived me and sent me here to make sure you don't stand a chance of overthrowing him. Why would you work for him? The Emperor only cares about himself. Once he's finished with you, he'll find another new apprentice to replace you, so you don't end up turning on him too. No, we will rule the galaxy side by side something you could never do. Now draw your weapon, Vader, and let's end this. I drew my lightsaber, ready for a fight. After all of my training and experience, I was feeling more ready than ever to take down this new enemy. But when Darth Maul rushed at me, I knew it wasn't gonna be an easy fight. I had never fought another Sith before. He was skillful in the ways of the dark side. He was incredibly fast and strong, definitely the toughest opponent I had faced so far. I needed a moment to think, so I ran back away from him and stood ready to defend myself. 
On days 95 and 97, I continued battling against Darth Maul in the cave. It was a pretty close battle. We were evenly matched, but putting some space between us helped give me a moment to wait before I could land a critical strike. I dealt some extra damage to Maul, which gave me the advantage I needed. No, mercy, please have mercy. I stopped for a second. I had already defeated him, knocking him down, but I didn't completely destroy him. If I struck him down in anger, I'd never be able to get back from the dark side. So instead, I spared him. With Darth Maul beaten and not going anywhere, I decided to look around the cave for anything I could use and found myself a shiny new battle axe. That was bound to come in handy. I turned back to the fallen Maul. Now then, let's get you back to my base. You're gonna tell me everything about where the Emperor is hiding so Luke and I can go and deal with him once and for all. I took Darth Maul back to my base and put him in the barracks there. After all, those stormtroopers weren't using the place anymore. Tell me where I can find the Emperor. Fine, I can draw you a map to the new battle station he's building, and you'll let me go afterwards? Only if you promise to turn your back on the dark side. I fear it might be too late for that. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Don't be afraid. Just give being good a try. Thanks to Maul, I now knew where Luke and I had to go to get rid of the Emperor once and for all. On day 98, after getting the new map from Maul, I decided to make a final check on everything at my base before setting off. Luke had brought my two old droid friends R2 and 3PO back, along with some of his friends too. As I was meeting them, I realized I did recognize a couple of them. It was Han Solo and Chewbacca, the smuggler and the Wookiee I'd fought earlier while searching for Luke. Relax, Chewie. Luke told us the situation. Lucky for us, we survived that encounter in the cave. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, sorry about that. I'm so glad to see the two of you are recovering well. Well, we wouldn't be if it wasn't for Leia over there. Next, they introduced me to Princess Leia. It turned out she was the other Skywalker, and that meant she and Luke were actually brother and sister. Wow. Then, a pair of glowing force ghosts appeared. It was my two old masters, Obi-Wan and Yoda. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I never thought I'd see the day when you turned back to the light, Zozo. But beware, you must. Do not underestimate the powers of the Emperor, or suffer the same fate you will. I believe in him. I've sensed the good in him. We can defeat the Emperor together. Then, may the Force be with you. It seems like everyone believed I had what it took. With Luke and his amazing friends in my corner, the Emperor didn't stand a chance. On day 99, I followed the map that Maul had made to Emperor Palpatine's lair. It was now or never, with only one more day left, or I would be lost to the dark side of the Force forever. Plus, I had to help protect Luke too. There was no way I was going to let the Emperor bring him over to the dark side too. We won't fail. I know it. Thank you, Luke. We soon reached a massive battle station under construction, with armor made out of diamonds to protect it from damage. And the place was swarming with stormtroopers. There were so many of them, but I wasn't scared. I knew that I could take them all on, because this time, I wasn't alone. I had Luke by my side, and the Force was strong with both of us. On day 100, Luke Skywalker and I fought our way through the stormtroopers and headed inside the Diamond Death Star. The whole place was crawling with troopers, but Luke and I managed to get through into a large open room with a throne at one end. And sitting in it was Emperor Palpatine himself, cackling loudly. <laughs> so, you have brought me young Skywalker after all. No, we're here to stop you. Your reign is at an end, your highness. You failed. So be it, Jedi. If you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. Suddenly, he started to shoot at Luke with his force lightning. Young fool, your feeble skills are no match for the power of the dark side. Now you will pay the price for your lack of vision. No! I pulled out my new battle axe and rushed in to defend Luke. Before I could attack, the Emperor used the Force to throw me aside, and I dropped my axe. You couldn't destroy me before. You don't really believe you'll destroy me now, do you? You underestimate the power of the dark side. Zozo, please, help. My lightsaber, I still had that. I didn't let up. Luke needed my help. I could feel the light side of the Force returning to me as I raced towards Palpatine. He turned to try and defend himself from me, which meant Luke could get back up to help. The hate is swelling in you now. Take your weapons and strike me down. Give in to your anger. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. You are both mine. No, we don't have to be like you. I rushed at the Emperor with my lightsaber and knocked him back. He fell down a huge chasm in his battle station, screaming as he went down and down until he exploded. Luke, help me take this mask off. 
Let's not stick around here. I've still got to save you. You already have, Luke. You were right. You were right about me. And thanks to Luke, I had come back to the light side. On day one, I spawned into the middle of the Black Forest as Herobrine, Minecraft's spookiest phantom. Well, a baby version of Herobrine anyway. But why am I here? I was on some kind of altar with a sinister robed figure standing and staring at me. Yes, yes, my plan worked. This is the growing sign that my powers are growing. Plan? Powers? Who are you? And what's going on here? You don't know the name of your master, boy. I am Dorian, the drowned necromancer, master of the undead, and you are my servant. Servant? I didn't sign up for that. I don't even want to be a ghost. I want to have a body. What you want doesn't matter. Without me, you wouldn't exist. And unless I choose to give you a body in the next 100 days, your spirit will fade away into nothingness. Bow to me, boy. Never! And my name is Zozo. With all my might, I jumped out of the altar and ran off into the forest as fast as I could. I didn't want anything to do with Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and his plan to get more power. I need to work on my plan, getting my body back. When I was convinced that I'd lost Dorian, I hid under a tree for the rest of the day. As a restless spirit, I couldn't even get any rest. Being here, O'Brien, sure isn't easy. On day two, I decided to further explore the Black Forest. It was dark and spooky, the exact kind of place that a scary spirit like me would be summoned. If I wasn't a ghost myself, I'd be afraid of running into a ghost around here. And, oh geez, I only have five hearts. I thought ghosts were meant to be more durable than this. But I didn't have time to wallow in self-pity for long because a gang of frightening dread liches emerged out of the trees. Why is everyone around here so eerie? We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He gave us new life, so we owe everything to him. Oh, that's just my luck. And I guess you want to kidnap me and take me back to him for his sinister plans. Huh, we didn't expect you to already know this. I guess it saves us some explanation time at least. In the name of Dorian, we come and dare your soul! The Dread Liches punched me! With no weapons and very low health, I didn't have any hope of fighting back against them. Instead, I turned around and ran as quickly as I could. My soul, my rules! The Black Forest seemed dark and infinite, so at least it wasn't difficult to lose those nasty liches. The downside was that I'd gotten lost myself, and as I wandered through the forest, getting more and more creeped out, I ran into a siren! Ah, oh, another ghost! How exciting! Wait, you can see me? Of course I can see you! I'm a psychic! Sarah the Psychic Siren, General Services. Pleased to meet you! So, you're not going to try to steal my soul like everyone else I've met? Steal your soul? Heck no! I'm a huge supporter of spirits' rights! Come with me, my new ghost friend! I'll introduce you to my boss! Finally having met someone nice, I followed Sarah the Psychic Siren through the trees. On day three, Sarah led me through the forest until we came upon a small cottage. A sign outside read, Psychic Services for All Ghosts. Wow, I had no idea this kind of place existed, Sarah. There are more ghosts in this forest than you think. It's got to be someone's job to take care of them and help them along their way. Suddenly, the front door opened and a geomancer stepped out. Zozo, meet my boss, Jerry the Geomancer. Jerry, I found Zozo here wandering through the Black Forest like a restless spirit. He needs our help. Is that a fact? It's nice to meet you, Zozo. Tell me, how did you find yourself in this difficult situation? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure. I was summoned and bound by this guy called Dorian, the Drowned Necromancer, and he told me that if I didn't serve him, I'd disappear in 100 days. It's got me pretty worried. <sighs> It's concerning. I've heard of many cases caused by this Dorian fellow, a truly dangerous customer. I'm gonna put Sarah on your case. She'll come and help you build a base and get situated. And together, we'll get your body back. Thank you, Jerry and Sarah. I'm feeling better already. Let's go, Zozo. With the mission to get my body back decided on, Sarah and I journeyed further into the forest to get started. From day four to day five, Sarah and I explored the Black Forest until we discovered an area with a nice, flat terrain. So, Sarah, 
What do you think we should do first? I'd say cut down a few of these trees. That'll give you some of the wood you need to build a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. Great idea, Sarah. I cut down a tree and made a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. From there, I mined enough stone to also create a stone pickaxe, axe, and a stone sword. It's difficult to hold this stuff, being a ghost, but I'll try my best. That's the spirit, Zozo. I cleared enough space in the forest to start laying down a basic base, collecting some extra wood along the way. It started off with a pretty basic setup, with just a room for me and a room for Sarah. Oh, this is a nice setup, Zozo. I guess living with you technically means we're living in a haunted house. Yeah, I guess so. Say, this is probably a pointless question to ask, but is it possible for ghosts to eat? Because I'm getting really hungry right now. You're in luck, Zozo. I have an enchanted apple that ghosts can eat in my inventory right now. Enjoy! Sarah gave me the apple, and I ate it. Instantly, I felt my power starting to grow. I had 20 hearts now, and I developed a new ghost ability, warping from place to place. Wow. This is fascinating, Zozo. I feel so lucky that I'm getting to see it. From day six to day eight, I went wandering around the nearby Twilight Valley, looking for more rare enchanted food. As a ghost, my ghostly hunger was really difficult to satisfy, and Sarah didn't know how to enchant more food. It kinda sucks to be a ghost. I still have a lot of the downsides of being human, plus a bunch of new downsides. But while I was wandering around the valley, I heard some commotion and ran in to see what was happening. Maybe I can help someone. In the distance, I saw a Vindicator Chef, one of the most powerful types of chefs in the world, being attacked by a nasty gang of skeleton vanguards. A chef, huh? What a stroke of good luck. I used my new ghost power to warp over there and pulled out my stone sword. With all my focus and determination, I fought all of the skeleton vanguards until none remained. It was only me and the Vindicator Chef. You saved my life, sir. I owe you a great debt. What is your name? I'm Zozo. Zozo, a strong name for a strong hero. I am Victor, Victor the Vindicator Chef. And if you do a favor for me, I will repay your kindness by any means necessary. That sounds like a good deal. What kind of favor would you like me to do? Follow me and I'll show you. I followed Victor the Vindicator Chef deeper into the Twilight Valley, excited to get him on my side. From day nine to day 10, Victor took me to a clearing in the valley where a huge moon skeleton was waiting. Oh geez, that thing is a monster. You want me to defeat a mutant skeleton? I believe in you, Zozo. Seeing you take down all those skeleton vanguards makes me completely confident in your ability to slay this beast. Go forth. Uh, thanks for the vote of confidence, Victor. I steeled myself as best as I could and warped over to the mutant skeleton. It immediately started attacking me and I started attacking it back. But my attacks were barely doing anything and its attacks were taking way too many hearts off of me. I gotta get out of here. I warped away from the fight and ran back to Victor, telling him the disappointing news. Oh, well, I'm sure you tried your best nonetheless. I suppose we'll go our separate ways. No, hear me out. I could really use a Vindicator Chef back at my base. You're the only type of chef who can cook the type of enchanted food I can eat. How about you stay at my base, and I promise I'll come back and defeat this mutant skeleton when I'm strong enough. That sounds like a good deal to me. Lead the way, dear Zozo. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to the base with Victor the Vindicator Chef. I know it isn't much, but it's home. I'm going to make you a room. Thank you, Zozo. I'll get working on a little something of my own in the meantime. I got to work, gathering up new materials, and started building a new little bungalow for the Vindicator Chef to stay in while crashing at my base. What do you think, Victor? This is a nice little room, Zozo. Thank you. And you can come and see what I made for you, too. Go and check your room. I walked over and saw that Victor had made a high-end kitchen in my base. Perfect for cooking up the kind of enchanted food I could eat. This is amazing, Victor. I'm getting hungry just looking at it. But the kitchen is only one side of the equation, Zozo. I need some good quality ingredients. Perhaps we should build a farm on the base. That's another excellent idea. I decided to build a little enclosure and went out into the black forest where I found a bunch of chickens. It wasn't hard to herd them back to my base. I can taste the eggs and fried chicken already. When I returned to my room to relax, I found that Sarah the Psychic Siren was waiting for me with some new information. I did some research into Dorian the Drowned Necromancer, Zozo, and found some interesting information. 
He used to be a flesh and blood necromancer, terrorizing the overworld by raising the undead, until one day the people rose up and drowned him in the ocean. Somehow, Dorian returned, and he's been acting on his evil plans ever since. Wow, this guy is really scary. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to Sarah once again and asked her what she thought I should do in order to get my body back. Right now, Zozo, knowledge is power. The more we can find out, the more likely we'll be able to help you get your body back. Head out to the Twilight Valley and see what you can find out. That's an excellent idea, Sarah. I journeyed out into the Twilight Valley, which reminded me of the time that I'd failed to defeat the mutant skeleton. Why is nothing ever easy around here? But my difficulties were only just getting started. One of the dread liches who worked for Dorian the Drowned Necromancer came from behind me, ready to fight me. I serve my glorious master, Dorian the... The Drowned Necromancer, yeah, 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 I get it. Let's just fight. Fine, but way to take all the fun out of this. I battled the Dreadlich with all my might. He was a formidable opponent, but in the end, I defeated him all the same. And that gave me the XP I needed to level up again. I got bigger, stronger, rose up to 40 hearts, and gained a new offensive power, Lightning Strikes. Finally, some actually cool ghost powers. From day 16 to day 19, I found my way into the wooded badlands, where I continued my search for any useful information that could help me defeat Dorian the Drowned Necromancer and get my body back. During the first couple days of my search through the badlands, I didn't find anything. But on day 19, I happened upon a dusty, old book hidden out of the way. Yay, reading! I love that! But it wasn't just a fun reading experience that would engage my imagination, it was also a book that contained some critical information about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. It read, like all cardinal undead, the Drowned Necromancer has a beard of ice. Therefore, he must spend most of his time in the freezing cold, and he has a severe weakness to fire. So that's two useful pieces of information. Dorian has a weakness to fire, and he must be hiding somewhere cold. I can't wait to tell Sarah about this. But my celebration was short-lived, as suddenly a couple of dreadliches ambushed me, trying to get revenge for their friend I defeated back in the Twilight Valley. Thankfully this time, I had the power of ghostly lightning in my hands. I fired some lightning bolts at the dreadliches until they were destroyed. I'm getting my body back no matter what. From day 20 to day 22, I continued through the wooded badlands, feeling strong and confident about all the information I'd found recently. I ran into a nasty gang of hungry spiders and used my new lightning ability to zap them. These spiders are hardly a threat to me now. I decided that now was the perfect time to upgrade my gear too. I searched until I found an underground cavern and looked around until I found some iron ore. I mined the ore and smelted it into some ingots, creating an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. Now I'm stronger than ever. Come to think of it, I have some unfinished business to take care of now. Remembering the debt I owe to Victor the Vindicator Chef, I returned to the Twilight Valley and hunted down that scary mutant skeleton I'd agreed to defeat. When I saw the mutant skeleton, I first unleashed a lightning strike, stunning it. Then I ran in and struck it again and again with my new iron sword until it was no more. A hero brine always pays his debts. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the base to let Victor the Vindicator Chef know that I had paid my debt to him by defeating the mutant skeleton. I can see that you've gotten strong just like you promised you would. That's right, and I plan on becoming even stronger, Victor. They'll start calling me Victor too, because I won so many battles. But that's my name, Zozo. Won't that get confusing? True, I guess I'll just stick with Zozo. After my talk with Victor, I went to the underground cavern where I could mine for more iron. With my iron pickaxe, I was able to mine the iron ore in no time. In the same area, I found a treasure chest with a bunch of iron ingots that I could use to craft a full set of iron armor. I'm like a ghostly knight. I went back above and went to see Victor the Vindicator Chef again. He said he had some news to share with me. Zozo, I've made an addition to the base that I think you might really enjoy. He showed me a relaxation room that was perfect for ghosts like me. You did a really good job on this, Victor. We ghosts might not be able to rest in peace, but at least now we can relax about it. It was no trouble at all, friend. From day 27 to day 31, I was out exploring the same area of the wooded badlands where I defeated the dreadliches. I came across a farmer who was jumping for joy at the sight of me. 
that's not the usual reaction people have for Herobrine, so I went over to ask why he was in such a good mood. What's got you so happy, Mr. Farmer? It's because of you, Zozo. Those dread liches were a real snake in my boot. But ever since you defeated them, I've had no worries. Glad to hear it. Slaying evil monsters and improving lives is totally my thing. Well, there is one small worry. When those dread liches were still around, one of them scared off all my sheep. I needed them for wool. I'll help you out. You can even come live at my base if you'd like. That sounds pretty keen, Zozo. I led the farmer back to the base, then set off through the black forest to find some sheep so I could gather the wool that the farmer was looking for. Taming them was easy enough, and soon there was enough wool to go around. Afterwards, I decided to do some decorating. These Herobrine banners will show the mobs that this base is home to one mighty ghost. With the decorations done, I found Sarah the Psychic Siren waiting inside. There you are, Zozo. You have to leave the base with me now. It's an emergency. What's going on? Come on, I'll explain when we get there. From day 32 to day 35, I left the base with Sarah and traveled through the Black Forest. Along the way, we were ambushed by a small gang of dread liches. Boy, does this feel familiar. I should have seen this coming. I am a psychic after all. We serve our glorious master, Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. They really do say it every time, don't they, Sarah? They sure do. Hey, don't diss our catchphrase, or we'll have to get mean. Well, meaner. The dreadliches began to attack, so I zapped them with my ghost lightning strikes. None of the dreadliches I had fought before had seen that ability, so it took them by surprise, and I was able to quickly defeat them. We traveled on, and I soon noticed that Sarah and I had come to the place where Jerry the Geomancer had resided before. This time, it was completely destroyed, and the area was full of Dorian's dreadliches. Hey, this is Jerry's place. Get out of here. It looks like we were too late, Sozo. This is exactly what I foresaw in my psychic vision. I knew what Sarah meant when I saw Jerry backed against a corner. He had tried to fight the dreadliches on his own, but he was about to die. Zozo, is that you? It seems I won't be able to see you get your body back. Jerry, I'm sorry. We got here as fast as we could. Don't worry about me. Dorian will surely pay for this. Make sure you and Sarah protect each other. We will. Rest well, Jerry. I was so enraged by Jerry's death that I destroyed the dreadliches with my lightning strikes until there were none left in the area. From day 36 to day 39, I made a return trip back to the Twilight Valley. It hadn't changed much since the other time I was here, but there was a fisherman at the local pond who I hadn't seen before. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Well, hi there, Zozo. I'm fishing. No, oh, I'm just kidding. My name is Fred the Fisherman, and I could use a hand. Sure, Fred. What seems to be the problem? I know I'd be able to catch more fish if I had some twilight worms as bait. But they're all way up there in the higher parts of the valley. Can you go get a couple for me? You can count on me, Fred. I climbed up the terrain of the Twilight Valley, enjoying the view along the way. With all that happened recently, it was nice to gather my thoughts for a moment. The moment didn't last long, though, because I was attacked by a giant. Even though it was big, it had gotten the drop on me. I took a few swings with my iron sword to make it think twice. Then I warped back a short distance and hit it with a few lightning strikes. I closed the distance back into melee range and finished it off with my sword. Soon after, I returned to Fred the Fisherman with the bait he was looking for. Happy fishing. Hope you catch a big one. Thanks. I only came here to the valley because the fishing in the ocean ain't that good anymore. Ever since that drowned necromancer rose from the sea, People have been afraid that he might have left a curse on it. He is really evil, that Dorian. A curse on the place he was drowned. Sure sounds like him. From day 40 to day 43, I was looking at the base after coming home from my short journey and noticed that it had been redecorated to look even spookier, which for ghosts and spirits is incredibly cool. This place looks amazing. I predicted that you would like the changes, Zozo. Sarah, was this you? I do like it, but what was the occasion? I wanted to invite some of my siren sisters to come live at the base. The new look is so they'll feel right at home. Is that all right with you? Of course. If the other sirens are anything like you, then we'll all get along nicely. A while later, the other sirens that Sarah had mentioned arrived at the base. It was right at the time she had predicted that they would arrive. Hello, everyone. Make yourself at home. Friends of Sarah are friends of mine. Thanks for being so understanding, Zozo. Living at this base together always works out when we compromise. Sure, the more the merrier. 
Soon after I greeted the sirens, the farmer who was also living at the base approached me so that we could talk. Well, hey there, Zozo. You're just the ghost I was looking to see. I have another job for you, if you're willing. Of course. I'm always willing to help a farmer in need. I heard from some other farmers that there is a mutant enderman running around and ruining everyone's crops. If you could take care of that mob, you'd be helping farmers everywhere. You can count on me. From day 44 to day 49, I took up the farmer on his request and traveled to the Taiga Mountain. That mutant enderman who was causing problems had to be around here somewhere. But it wasn't just mobs I had to worry about. Dorian was here on the mountain too, alongside a mutant zombie. Well, 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 if it isn't the hero Brine who defied me. How has the spirit been faring? You're probably close to fading away into nothingness by now. You wish, Dorian. My ghost form has only gotten more powerful, and I will use everything I have to get my body back. Easier said than done, Zozo. You really think getting your body back will be so simple? I was counting on your ghost to become a vengeful spirit. Wait, what do you mean? Do you think the restless dead can return so easily to the way they used to be? Why do you think I still carry the curse of undeath after the villagers drowned me? It's because there is no way back to life for us evil spirits. It can't be. Have I been getting stronger for nothing? Yes, embrace your rage and frustration. Become the monster Herobrine and forget about reclaiming your body. My undead will help you become what you are meant to be. Dorian the Drowned Necromancer disappeared into a fog, leaving behind the mutant zombie to battle me. From day 50 to day 53, I started my battle against the mutant zombie that had been sent against me. My lightning strikes were proving effective, but because of what Dorian the Drowned Necromancer had said, I was starting to get worried about using my ghost powers. I switched my sword and hacked away at the mutant zombie. I didn't use my warp or my lightning strike. It made the fight a lot harder, but I had to believe that I was more than just the monster hero Brian. I am going to get my body back, no matter what! The mutant zombie was defeated after a big struggle, and it dropped a spellbook once it was defeated. I took a moment to examine it, and I saw a flashback to Dorian's revival. He had just emerged from the ocean as a drowned necromancer, and was looking to get revenge on the people of the world for what they did to him, casting down lightning strikes in his wrath. He researched the legends of other powerful undead beings, and eventually came across the story of Herobrine. It looked like he didn't just steal my body to make me into a ghost, he wanted to make me just like the dangerous and evil Herobrine from the stories. Maybe then, he'd finally have someone else as tortured and wicked as himself to hang out with. From day 54 to day 57, I resumed the farmer's quest to stop the mutant enderman in the Taiga Mountain. I found the mob in the process of a rampage, and with some nervousness, I approached. Can I actually defeat this mutant enderman without my ghost powers? The mutant enderman sprinted at me and swiped at me with its powerful limbs. My hearts were getting low, and I was still weakened from the fight with the mutant zombie. <laughs> Is that all the great hero Brian can do against me? I thought you were more powerful. That's what the story said. Believe everything you hear. I may not be the same Herobrine that is feared by everyone, but I am Herobrine myself. When I said it out loud, it made sense. I could use my ghost powers because I was the one in control of them, and I was using them to help. Take this. Ow, lightning strikes hurt. I thought I could be the scariest, but now I'm done for. My ghost powers made short work of the mutant enderman. He dropped an item upon his defeat, which turned out to be an antler headdress. Wow. With his headgear equipped, all of my attacks would gain greater knockback. What a neat upgrade. I returned to the farmer at the base and told him that I had defeated the mutant enderman. It seems that I can always count on you, Zozo. As a reward for getting rid of that mutant enderman, I'll tell you a secret about Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. What do you know about him? I was there when the villagers drowned him in the ocean. His last words were a curse to everyone. He said, soon you'll all feel the loneliness that I have felt. What did he mean? I don't know, but he probably had something real evil in mind when he said it. 
From day 58 to day 62, I managed to herd some more chickens into the base just to make sure we had a big enough food source for everyone. Then, I made my way deep into the underground cavern so I could do some mining for better materials. I used my iron pickaxe to dig until I struck diamonds and mined myself enough to create a diamond pickaxe. I equipped the new tool and kept mining diamonds until I had enough to craft a diamond sword, leggings, a chest plate, and boots. This new weapon and armor would serve me well in battle against the undead forces of Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. With my first pieces of diamond armor and gear in tow, I returned to the base, and there were now floating lanterns of ghost lights around the base. I even found that a new room had been added. Sarah had been hard at work making our haunted house into a haunted home. This is just my way of saying thanks, Zozo. You've really been a friend to everyone after we lost Jerry the Geomancer. I feel like I could stay here for a very long time. Thanks, Sarah. That means a lot, too, because for ghosts like us, a really long time might mean eternity. From day 63 to day 66, I was down in the underground cavern making some expansions to the mine when Victor the Vindicator Chef came to see me. Hey, Zozo, I heard that you were still looking for your original body. There's a biome nearby where you may not have looked yet. Oh, really? Well, I'm glad you thought to tell me about it, Victor. I went back above ground and traveled to the place that Victor had told me about, the Wooded Badlands. I looked around for any signs of necromancy magic or a gravestone, anything that might lead me to my body. That's when I noticed a scary gorgon sneaking up on me. Boo! Hey, don't say boo to me. I'm a ghost. That's our thing. Sorry, sorry. I thought it would be fun to startle you. I didn't mean any offense. It seemed like she meant it. That was a relief, because I thought I would have to fight this Gorgon. You're a lot nicer than you look. I could say the same thing about you. You're the Hero Brine, aren't you? Sorta. I'm the new Hero Brine. My name is Zozo. Zozo, huh? Hey, Morgan. You could still help me with a Hero Brine quest, right? I think so. What did you have in mind? Oh, you agreed. This way, a new ghost friend. From day 67 to day 70, I followed Morgan the Gorgon through the wooded badlands to find out more about this Herobrine quest she had mentioned. So, aren't you curious about this Herobrine quest of ours? Yes, actually. I was waiting for you to tell me more. Well, according to the scary stories about Herobrine, he is supposed to be the most powerful undead because of his ability to rebuild and destroy. Rebuild and destroy? Yes. Herobrine can destroy and rebuild the world however he wants, and anyone who is able to control him would be able to gain the same power. I don't have that kind of power. Not yet. That's why we're on this quest. You need to regain your power by facing down another being that Herobrine fought. That's why we're headed to the lair of the Dread Beast. We soon arrived at a part of the wooded badlands where the dangerous mob, known as the Dread Beast, was known to have her lair. Come on out, Dread Beast. I am Zozo the Herobrine, and I challenge you. The Dread Beast soon emerged and roared with anger. You think you're Herobrine? Please, I battled the real Herobrine in the past. You'll never be as powerful a ghost as him. We'll see. The Dread Beast charged in, but I knocked her back with a couple slices from my diamond sword, combined with the increased knockback from the antler headdress. She tried to resist and charge at me, but I warped out of the way and brought down lightning strikes until she was defeated. From day 71 to day 74, I thanked Morgan the Gorgon for helping me learn more about the hero brine from the stories and left her to travel further across the wooded badlands in search of my body. I was starting to get the hang of this new spooky hero brand story, and I was also starting to think it was going to end up being a pretty good one. But it's not the only story that you can find on this channel, so you should look for my other videos by typing ZO ZO into the search bar. I arrived at a rundown structure in the middle of the wooded badlands. I thought it maybe had something to do with how my old body might have lived. Yeah, I can feel it. I was definitely here before I was a ghost. But that's what you are now, so why try to go back? Dorian, it's you. Still chasing after the past, Zozo? You will become my hero, Brian, and I will use your powers to rebuild a world where everyone is as lonely as I've been. That's a terrible thing to do, and I won't let you get away with it. I tried to lightning strike him, but he was immune to the damage. When I swung my diamond sword, he struck back with his own weapon, doing far more damage than I could do to him. Fool, you actually thought I wasn't prepared to fight you. You'll get a bit stronger, but your ghost form will still fade away. Before then, I do hope you help me achieve my lonely world. 
What else do you have to continue on for? Dorian the Drowned Necromancer spared my ghostly life, probably because I was still important to his plans. One thing's for sure, I need to get stronger than he ever imagined I could be. From day 75 to day 78, I kept thinking about how I should face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer. He had been a restless spirit for a lot longer than me, and maybe I'd have to become just as evil as him to have a fighting chance. But I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be that kind of hero, Brian. Seeing that I was down, Sarah the Psychic Siren came to my room to cheer me up. Zozo, I foresaw that you would be sad, so I made sure to give the basin an almost invisible enchanted mist so it'd be hidden from attacks. That way, nobody will disturb us without us expecting it. That's really good, Sarah. Thank you. Let me tell you, Zozo, in my professional opinion as a psychic, I don't predict that you'll turn evil. I hope I can live up to your predictions. I went outside for a bit to get some air, and shortly after, Victor the Vindicator Chef joined me with a fresh new magic cake that he had just baked. Give this a try, Zozo. I think it might just pick you up. Thanks, Victor. I gobbled up the cake and felt a transformation coming on. I doubled in size, and my heart gauge increased to contain 80 hearts. Victor sure knows how to cook. From day 79 to day 84, I went back to the wooded Badlands to see if I could face Dorian the Drowned Necromancer again. I knew this whole thing would be over if I could just shut him down. Dorian wasn't here himself, but it seemed like he might have used some of his necromancy to mobilize a few random skeletons to fight me. With my lightning strikes, I was easily able to blow away these weak undead. I wasn't satisfied with the amount of searching I'd done here, so I examined the structure more closely. That's when I noticed doors that led to a dwelling where a pink pixie was staying. Hello there, I'm Zozo. Do you know anything about who used to live here? Yeah, I do. There was a village here that was destroyed by storms, a blizzard, and a thunderstorm. There was only one surviving villager, and he was really alone. Was that villager Herobrine? Yeah, this is the place where Herobrine's story began. The land has been cursed, and plants have never grown as well here since. It's just like that curse that Dorian put on the ocean. I've got to put the hero in Herobrine and find a way to lift both of those curses. This may help you in your journey, Zozo. Pixie gave me a netherite helmet, an extremely durable piece of armor that would certainly give me a fighting chance the next time I saw Dorian. From day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base, excited to show my friends the awesome netherite helmet I'd been given. Instead, I found a bunch of dreadliches invading my base, trying to find and attack those same friends. Oh, I can't let this slide. I don't want to overuse my ghost powers, but for the sake of my friends, it's a risk worth taking. I started firing lightning blasts left and right, destroying them quickly and dropping their morale. The rest saw my skills and took off running, but I wasn't going to let an attack on my own base slide. I came running after them. But while chasing them, I ran into a troll who seemed to be crying. As much as I wanted revenge, I didn't want to leave a clearly distressed guy on the hook like that. So I asked him what was wrong. I've been working on my novel, but I can't seem to get through it. I'm losing confidence in myself. You can do it, Mr. Troll. Just believe in yourself and try to get past the first draft. I'll be excited to read it when it's done. Thank you, kind stranger. I'll never forget this. From day 90 to day 94, I followed the surviving dreadliches into the snowy plains. It was freezing. I remembered what I had read about Dorian before. He needs to be cold. He must be hiding somewhere out here. I'm on his territory now. But I couldn't afford to worry about that just yet. I needed to track down and defeat those liches. Eventually, I caught up to them. They must have gotten exhausted and stopped. I finally had my chance. You guys are gonna pay for attacking my base. Oh, Zozo, you're so naive. Dorian knew everything. He predicted exactly what you'd do. And now you're going to get destroyed. You've never been able to destroy me before. What makes you guys think you're going to be able to do it now? Oh, it won't be us, Zozo. It'll be him. A huge, terrifying Dread Knight stepped out, and the Dread Liches all ran off. He must have been one of Dorian's most dangerous henchmen yet. Even as a ghost, I think I'm gonna ache after this one. From day 95 to day 97, I went head to head with the Dread Knight. 
And he was as fast and as powerful as I'd feared. And as the battle went on, I was worried I might be doomed. Until I got a second wind and fought back with all of my might. Soon enough, I defeated even the terrible Dread Knight, the deadliest of Dorian the Drowned Necromancer's henchmen. I'm stronger than I've ever been, but does this mean I'm doomed to become evil and end up serving that monster? But my worried thoughts were interrupted by a new discovery. When the Dread Knight was defeated, he dropped a notebook containing instructions direct from the enemy. Destroy Zozo. He is unworthy of the title of Hero Bride. Return to the Ice Cave when you are done. If you need anything extra to finish the job, check the chest behind the broken boulder. So now I knew that Dorian was hiding in some kind of ice cave, and that note about the chest really intrigued me. I searched the snowy plain until I found a boulder that looked half shattered, and then I found a chest behind it. And inside the chest was a battle axe! This belongs to Dorian, and I can't wait to give it back to him. On day 98, I returned to my base to tell everyone who'd helped me how all of this was going to unfold. For all I knew, it might be my final chance to speak with them. Guys, I wanted to thank all of you for how much you've helped me. I never could have gotten this far without you. This final part is so dangerous that I have to do it alone. Dorian is more powerful than ever, but I'd rather be destroyed than let him use me as an evil tool. There's no way he'd destroy you, Zozo. You're too powerful and too good-hearted. And in the end, the good guys always win, and the bad guys always lose. Here, here. After you defeat him, Zozo, I'll bake a mighty cake that we can all enjoy. Ah, and I'll farm all the best quality ingredients. You got this, Zozo. I have full confidence in you. You're all the best. I'm gonna defeat him for you. All of you. And I'm going to get my body back. On day 99, I ventured back to the snowy plains with everything I needed to finally take on the big, bad beast of a necromancer who stole my body. It's time for me to show you the door, Dorian. Didn't actually take me that long to find the ice cave that was Dorian's hideout because I spotted a large guard force of dread liches waiting outside, keeping a lookout. Talk about an undead giveaway. There were so many of them, and they looked better armed and armored than usual. Dorian must have known I was coming and put them here to slow me down before the final battle. It's an ingenious plan. What can I do? I think I may be of service. I turned and saw that Morgan the Gorgon was behind me. Morgan, what are you doing here? Sorry for following you. I was going to yell boo again, but it didn't seem like the right moment. I feel like I've been missing out on all the action. Let me distract these undead creeps and you can go in there and take down the big bad guy. Sounds like a great plan, Morgan. Let's do this. On day 100, while Morgan was distracting the Dread Liches outside, I entered the ice cave and found Dorian the Drowned Necromancer waiting for me. You made it through my servants. How? It's because I don't have servants. I have friends. Oh, spare me all that self-righteous foolishness. You can't talk your way out of serving me. I brought you back. I bound you. You belong to me, Zozo, and nothing will change that. I'm going to keep fighting, no matter what, for myself and my friends. And when I'm done, all you're going to be is a bad memory. Then let's see. Time to go back to the void, silly little ghost. I unleashed everything I had onto Dorian, not giving up, even as he fought back against me. I could tell as the battle went on, he was getting weaker and weaker. I pulled out the battle axe, the battle axe that Dorian had left for his Dread Knight to destroy me. I'm sure the Void will welcome you, Dorian. And with one more strike, Dorian was no more. There was a tremendous flash, and in the moment that Dorian was destroyed, my body was returned to me. Wow, it feels amazing to be back. On day one, I spawned into the freezing cold Alps as supersonic. Whoa, look at me. I'm super fast and solid gold. This is one thing cooler than being Sonic, even if I only have 10 hearts. I was so distracted by my own cool shiny skin that I didn't even notice a massive obsidian golem stomping towards me through the snow. How? Who goes there? You should have asked, who's Zoe's there? Because I'm Zozo. It's nice to meet you. This is no time to joke. Golems everywhere are under threat right now. And if I believe you might be involved with a threat against us, I'll need to take you in for questioning. 
Sure, you can take me in for questioning, but you'll need to catch me first. I turned and ran off unbelievably fast, zipping across the Alps way faster than the obsidian golem could ever follow me. It felt like I was going to escape until I ran up into another obsidian golem standing right in front of me. What? How did you get here so fast? I didn't. I'm another guy, you dingus. Now come with me before I smash you with my big golem fist. Guess I can't argue with that. And with that, he led me away. On day two, the huge obsidian golem led me back to a fortified base hidden deep in the Alps. I was led into a cell, and the obsidian golem locked the door behind me. You better stay well behaved, Zozo. We don't want to hurt you if we don't have to. But if you make trouble for us, I'll make even bigger trouble for you. Okay, okay, I get it. You're a big scary golem. I won't mess with you. Thank you for getting it. I didn't want to labor the point. Golem left and left me in an obviously not ideal situation. Darn, I really need to figure out how to get out of here and figure out what's going on in the overworld. Clearly something isn't right. You're yeah, not the only one who feels that way, mate. I turned and saw a drop bear sitting in the cell with me. Somehow, I hadn't even noticed him in here. Good day, I'm Dave. Dave the drop bear. I was on vacation from down under, sightseeing in the Alps. And these big nasty golem blokes wrapped me on the knuckles and dragged me in here. You too, huh? I'm Zozo. It's nice to meet you, Dave. We need to figure out a way out of this place. Well, I've tried myself, mate. But if it was easy, I would have done it already. Okay, let me think. I don't have any tools, but I do have super speed. Maybe if I run at the wall with enough speed, I can break a hole into it. Couldn't hurt to try, mate. Well, it might hurt you to go into the wall really fast, but still, I encourage trying whenever I can. I took an epic run up, well, as epic as the size of the cell allowed, and ran straight into the wall. It broke enough of the blocks to let me and Dave escape, even if the impact did take off a few hearts. You're a legend, Zozo. I hope we meet again someday. Same here, Dave. Be safe out there. So we both made our ways out into the world, hoping that those nasty obsidian golems wouldn't find us. On day three, I continued traveling through the Alps, trying to find a safe way out. But my body was still aching from running into that wall at super speed. Ow, ow, ow. It worked, but in hindsight, I'm not sure why I thought that would be a good idea. But I wasn't just hurting, I was also hungry, and I needed to find some food soon, or I wouldn't even have the strength to run. What I'd do for a chili dog right now. But I didn't find a chili dog. Instead, I found some apples laying around and ate as many as I could to replenish my hunger bar. That's more like it. At least I won't starve and freeze up on this mountain. My relief was short-lived because a huge figure came rolling out of the snow towards me, even bigger and stronger than the obsidian golems. Oh no, oh no, I'm totally gonna be destroyed. I'm having terrible luck this week. Be not afraid, stranger. I am Humbaba, the wise, brave, and honest. And seeing as you're wandering through the snow, alone and afraid, I assume you've had an unfortunate run-in with the golems. How'd you guess? Believe me, I have good reason to know. Come with me, stranger. I'll keep you safe. And you can help me with a little something I've been working on. And so I followed Humbaba through the snow, having no idea what would happen next. From day four to day five, we finally left the Alps and entered the ancient forest, which was actually a lot more comfortable than all the freezing cold of the Alps. We arrived at Humbaba's base a little while after, where he gave me my first set of stone tools and a stone sword. Why are you giving me these? Because you need to get stronger, stranger. If you want to help me save the world, you need your own base, and you need to get better at fighting. But what are you trying to save the world from, Humbaba? Oh, and by the way, my name's Zozo. Once, they called me the king of the beasts. That means I ruled all the animals, and I did so kindly and fairly. Then came the cruel and diabolical golems, who toppled me from my throne and tried to capture and enslave all the animals I once represented. That's terrible! It certainly is. So go, Zozo, get stronger, and then return to me. We will save this world together. I left Humbaba's base and went further into the ancient forest. Eventually, I found a decent clearing and started cutting down trees and mining stone to start building myself a cool little base. This is coming along well. It'll be nice to be in a room that I haven't been locked in by somebody else. But saying that out loud, ironically, attracted the attention of one of the obsidian golems who'd locked me up. 
There you are! You owe us some emeralds after damaging a wall! I don't owe you guys anything! Using my super speed, I ran in and attacked him with my stone sword. Too fast for him to even fight back! Moments later, he was defeated, and I'd gained enough XP to level up! I got bigger, tougher, faster, and gained an awesome jump boost! I now also had 30 hearts instead of just 10! I'm really living up to my supersonic name! From day 6 to day 8, I was running back and forth through the ancient forest to test my super jumps and super speed. But along the way, I ran into an old friend, Dave the Trap Bear! Aw, oh, hey Dave! Fancy seeing you here! Sozo, good to see you, mate! You looking bigger and stronger since we last met each other? Have you been working out? I have! Thank you for noticing! What are you doing in the ancient forest, Dave? I've been laying low, mate. Keeping it old school. Those obsidian golems came looking for me. You too? Gosh, it seems like Humbaba was right. These obsidian golems are never going to give up unless we stop them. Humbaba? What's that? Oh, just a friend of mine. One I should probably go and see. I returned to Humbaba, eager to take on my first mission and stop these awful golems from taking over our lives. I'm glad you've come to realize how important our mission is, Zozo. But it's much bigger than just obsidian golems. It's all of them. Your first mission will be a trial by fire. Literally. Go to the savannah and defeat the magma golem. If you are strong enough, victory will be yours. From day 9 to day 10, I followed Humbaba's instructions and went out to the savannah. Boy, it's so hot out here, it almost makes me regret complaining about how cold the Alps were. But that heat wasn't just the climate, it was the heat coming off of a big, hot magma golem I was creeping up on. I approached carefully, ready to use a burst of speed to take him out with a surprise attack, but instead, he turned and caught me. Are you trying to sneak up on me, you little creep? That's not a good idea. You won't like what I do to people who sneak up on me. Don't worry, nobody is ever going to do it again after this, because I'm going to defeat you. Humbaba told me exactly where to find you, and here you are. You're one of Humbaba's goons? That makes all too much sense. I'm not a goon, I'm a hero. Let's go. I ran in at super speed and used my jump boost to leap over him. I pulled out my stone sword and attacked him as fast as I could. He turned and landed a few powerful hits on me, but in the end, I was victorious. Wow, I lost a lot of hearts in that battle. This isn't good. That's where I come in. I turned and saw that Dave the Drop Bear was walking towards me again. Dave, how did you find me? Pure luck. I had some commotion and ran right over. Yeah, I have a healing potion, mate. I drank the potion that Dave gave me and felt my hearts replenishing. Why are you out here anyway, Zozo? My friend Humbaba sent me out here to fight the Magma Golem. It was harder than I thought. He sends you on dangerous missions. That's a strange thing for a friend to do. We've got an important goal, Dave. You wouldn't understand. Thanks for the health potion, though. I'll pay you back for this someday. And with that, I ran off at the speed of sound to tell Humbaba about my victory. From day 11 to day 12, I rushed back to the ancient forest to tell Humbaba the good news. Welcome back, Zozo. Where are you successful in your mission? I sure was. It was pretty tough, but I managed to defeat the magma golem just like you asked. Excellent. But our work is far from over. If we are going to truly win the battle against the golems, you must become stronger. Get yourself some iron armor and weapons, then return to the savannah to seek out the remaining golems there. We must eradicate them from the land. Oh, that sounds kind of intense. Don't you trust me? Well, I have no reason not to, so I guess I'll get going. I journeyed to a nearby cave and started looking for some iron ore. After a little while, I managed to find some. Time to make some new gear with this. I used the iron to fashion some iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron pickaxe. As I was getting ready to leave the cave, the obsidian golem appeared. He looked pretty mad. There you are, Humbaba's evil henchman. Why do you guys keep saying stuff like that? I'm a good guy. Good guys don't run around attacking innocent golems. He attacked me, but I fought back, and before too long, I had managed to defeat him. From day 13 to day 15, I took my new gear and traveled back to the savannah. There has to be some golems around here somewhere. As I was exploring, I spotted a raccoon cowering behind a tree. Excuse me, have you seen any golems making trouble around here? Eek! Please don't hurt me! What? I'm not gonna hurt you. And you were here earlier, fighting the magma golem. 
so that I can help free the animals, like you. I I'm trying to help. Help? I didn't need your help. That magma golem was my friend. He just threw me a birthday party last week. You're ruining everything. You and your horrible boss. I decided to leave the raccoon alone before I made matters worse. Something feels wrong. I'd better go back to Humbaba and talk to him about this. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to the ancient forest to ask Humbaba what the heck was going on. I'm probably just misunderstanding, or maybe that raccoon had me mixed up with someone else. When I got there, Humbaba looked really busy, but I decided to talk to him anyway. Hey, so when I got to the savanna, there was this raccoon and… I don't have time for this. I have important matters to attend to. Come back when you've done what I asked. Jeez, he's in a bad mood. I decided to go back to my base so I could take a moment to think. When I got there, Dave the Drop Bear was waiting for me. Zozo, it's a mess, mate. That Humbaba friend of yours is attacking a bunch of animals and golems in the savanna. It's chaos. What? That doesn't sound like him. I'll go check it out. I rushed there as fast as I could, and sure enough, Humbaba was stomping around and attacking everyone in sight. What are you doing? Don't tell me you've lost your nerve now. I'm just doing what needs to be done, reclaiming my rightful place on the throne as king of the beasts. Wait a second, you're not trying to help anyone, you just want to be in charge again. Took you long enough to figure it out. You, you tricked me. I couldn't stand there and watch anymore. I ran at him with my sword drawn and attacked, but he was too strong. He knocked me down with only one hit. I tried to get back up, but he hit me again and everything went dark. From day 20 to day 22, I finally woke up, still in the savanna. I couldn't see Humbaba anywhere. Must have knocked me out and finished what he started. This place is a disaster. I can't believe he misled me like that. I feel like such a fool. I'm so sorry, everyone. If you need a place to stay while your homes are rebuilt, you can go to my base. After I gave them the invitation, I traveled back to my base to make some much needed improvements. We don't have enough room for guests right now. I'll need to expand. I built an additional room, and I was going to add more, but only Dave the Draw Bear showed up. Sure it's okay for me to stay here. Definitely. Welcome home. Thanks, mate. For what it's worth, I don't think you're bad. You were doing what you thought was right. Now you know better. It's never too late to turn things around and fight for the good guys. From day 23 to day 26, I decided to go back to where I started before Humbaba filled my head with lies, the Alps. When I got there, I saw a vicious hellhound chasing after a poor defenseless roadrunner. Now's my chance to do something good and actually start helping people who need it. Hold on, I'll save you. Meet me, hurry, I can't run this fast forever. I sprang into action, running as fast as I could and jumped in front of the hellhound, blocking its path. With my iron sword, I managed to hold back the beast and rescue the roadrunner from its jaws. But it wasn't defeated yet. The roadrunner ran off down the road, leaving me to finish my battle with the hellhound. I was worried I wouldn't make it, but I finally managed to defeat it. As I stood there, catching my breath, I felt my heart's increase to 50, and I gained the ability to climb walls. From day 27 to day 31, I found some lost sheep wandering around the Alps. They didn't have anywhere to stay, so I invited them to come live at my base. I quickly traveled back to my base to build a pen for the sheep. There, perfect for some sheep to sleep. Haha, <laughs> sleep sheep, that rhymes. Show sure does, mate. Hey, if you're done improvising poetry about farm animals, wanna come see what I built? Sure. I followed Dave into the base, and he showed me a new room that wasn't there before. Yeah, it's a storage room. We can keep all sorts of things in here. Armor, swords, boomerangs, you name it. That's great. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, back in the ancient forest, Humbaba had found a new henchman, someone terrifying and powerful, a slave and warder ready to follow his every order. Zozo's foolishness might have delayed my plans a little. But with your help, we can still erase all golems from this land and make me king again. Yes, my liege. All shall bow before you or perish. From day 32 to day 35, I returned to the Alps and made my way to the golem base where I was held prisoner before. I had to make things right with the golems and show them that I was on their side. The obsidian golem there wasn't very happy to see me. You dare show your face here again? After all you've done, I should have you locked up and throw away the key. Wait, don't! 
He ran at me and attacked me, but I dodged. I'm not here to fight. I want to say I'm sorry. I was tricked by Humbaba. I thought you guys were the danger, but I know better now. I want to help. If you truly wish to help, then there is someone you should meet. Follow me. He led me to a wise ancient gold golem. Hello, my son. I'm your son? There's not much family resemblance. It's just an expression. But I should warn you, if you wish to aid us in the battle against Chambaba, you are in for a difficult fight. Once, he was the king of the beasts, but he took that title by force, by terrifying and imprisoning all animals that opposed him. The golems freed the animals, and he swore revenge. Now it seems, the time has come for him to try and take his power back. We can't let him! I agree. Fight valiantly, young Zozo. I will help you however I can. From day 36 to day 39, I traveled back to my base, thinking about the gold golem's words. This is going to be a difficult fight, so I need some better equipment. I'd better find some more iron. I went back down into the cave and mined until I had enough iron to finish my set of armor. While I was looking, I found a few diamonds too. I'll bring these back to the base to use later. Crikey, look what I found. Zozo, look at this. I followed the sound of Dave's voice and saw what he was talking about, the Kyther. Awesome, let's bring it back with us. When Dave and I got back to the base, there was a prismarine golem waiting for us. Zozo, the gold golem sent me to find you. You need to come meet with him immediately. It's a matter of life and death. Then I guess I gotta go fast. From day 40 to day 43, I returned to the Alps to find what the gold golem so urgently wanted to tell me. Zozo, thank you for getting here so quickly. I have important information for you about Humbaba's grand scheme. You see... But before he could finish his sentence, we were both interrupted by a huge crashing sound. I turned and saw a slave and warder attacking the golem base. I am here for the head of the traitorous Zozo. You can't have my head. I need it for thinking of stuff. Face me and fight, little coward. I'm not a coward, but I know an unfair fight when I see one. No thanks. I ran away from the slave and warder and in the process ran into the gold golem again. Run, Zozo, protect yourself. We can handle ourselves here. The golems are used to doing battle with Humbaba's many goons. You don't have to tell me twice. Then I won't. You know what to do. I ran out of there as fast as I could as the slave and warder continued trying to tear the base apart. From day 44 to day 49, I was laying low at my base, still shaken from seeing the relentless attack of the slave and warder. It's lucky that I'm the fastest thing alive, or I don't know how I would have escaped that monster. I need to be more careful. Soon after that, I got a personal visit from the gold golem, and for once, he had some good news for me. Zozo, my son, lend me your ear. Gold golem, I'm so glad you're okay, and that your obsidian golems managed to repel the attack. We did, at a great cost. My men are rebuilding the base as best they can. But more importantly, I have been studying the sacred texts for answers to our Humbaba problem. And I think I may have what we need. Oh, tell me, Gold Golem, please! A battle axe, buried somewhere deep and dark, once wielded by a great hero who used it to slay some ancient evil. The legends say that the battle axe still has some of his power. That sounds like exactly what we need to defeat Humbaba. Where can we find it? This is where my knowledge ends. You must journey to the savannah and find the glowstone golem elder. Perhaps he will have the answers that you seek. Thankfully, with my speed, it won't take me long to get there. From day 50 to day 53, I used my super speed to reach the savanna in record time. I waited until nightfall, knowing it would be a lot easier to find the glowstone golem in the dark. When the darkness crept in, I started my search, running end to end in the savanna, until I saw a distinctive glow in the middle of a clearing. I approached and saw him standing there, as though he knew I was coming. The glowstone golem! Glowstone golem! My name is Zozo, and I humbly come to you, searching for help in defeating a great evil. Speak! My friend, the gold golem, told me of an ancient battle axe that might be able to defeat the evil Humbaba. Do you know where I could find such an axe? It would not matter if you could find it. Wait, what do you mean? 
You are not strong enough to wield that ancient battle axe. When you are ready to use it, only then will you find it. What? I have spoken. Away with you, Zozo. Do not seek the battle axe. The battle axe will seek you, if you deserve it. And like that, the conversation was over. I went back to my base, moving much more slowly this time, feeling completely defeated. From day 54 to day 57, I returned to the Alps, planning on telling the Gold Golem the bad news, that his Glowstone Elder hadn't told me anything useful. But that's when something even worse happened. The terrifying slave and warder hopped out right in front of me. There you are, you sad little glittery worm. You dared defy the great King Hambaba, and you keep running away from the justice you so richly deserve. Why do you work for him, warder? He's no king, he's just a bully who thinks he's the best. Don't you know he thinks you're just as below him as everyone else? Of course I'm below him. He is the king, and we are all his loyal subjects. We exist to serve him, and those who refuse to serve him shouldn't exist, including you, Zozo. The slave and warder immediately lunged at me, and one attack from him took off a scary number of hearts. There was no way I could fight him off like this. I just needed to run away as fast as I could, which thankfully, as supersonic, was really, really fast. Meanwhile, at Humbaba's base, his evil plot was marching ever further. So, Zozo is seeking out the battle axe. Excellent. He'll do all the hard work, and then I'll take it from him. I'm so good at this. <laughs> from day 58 to day 62, I came back to my base, still feeling jittery from my encounter with the slave and warder. I need to get stronger weapons and armor. If I don't, I could be toast if I get ambushed by Humbaba or his slave and warder. But at least, when I arrived at my base again, Dave the Drop Bear had some cool news for me. Sozo, me old cobber. I've been working on a bit of a construction project while you were gone. For starters, I made a furnace for all your smelter needs. But I've also been working on putting together a bunker in case everything goes sideways. This is awesome, Dave. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, I've been running low on stone. You could go and get me some. That'd be a huge help, mate. Happy to have something to take my mind off of the threats at hand, I went to a nearby cave to mine Dave some extra stone. But while I was down there, I also got lucky and found some diamonds. Finally, my luck is starting to change. I went back to the base and gave Dave a bunch of stone blocks and then visited the furnace to forge some new items with my diamonds. A diamond helmet, a diamond sword, and a diamond pickaxe. Let's see that slave and warder try to mess with me now. From day 63 to day 66, I met with the gold golem at my base again. He'd managed to make a good break in the case. After studying further texts, I found a potential answer to our troubles, Zozo. Interpreting all the clues, I believe that the battle axe may be in the brimstone caverns where it is guarded by a terrible beast. That's at least 50% good news. Do you have any idea how I can enter the brimstone caverns? I've heard tell of a secret door somewhere in the ancient forest that leads directly to the brimstone caverns without another portal. Let us go and find it. There is no time to waste. Gold Golem and I ran out into the ancient forest, searching for the legendary door. And eventually, we did find it. There was only one problem. It was locked. Is there any way you can open it with magic, Gold Golem? I'm afraid only a special key can open a door like that, Zozo. Ah, oh, figures. From day 67 to day 70, with the key still out of reach, I decided I'd build some extra strength by helping the Gold Golem with a favor up in the Alps. A powerful Tartarus has been rampaging through the Alps. I don't believe it works with Humbaba or any of his men, but his threat needs to be neutralized one way or another. He's too distracting to our mission. I'll see what I can do. It'll be nice to feel like I've done something useful for once. Using my supersonic super speed, I blasted my way through the Alps until I came upon the Tartarus. It was as big and scary as I expected, but I pulled out my diamond sword and jumped into the fight. It wasn't easy, but eventually I fought the monster to a standstill, but I didn't destroy it. Instead, I spoke to it. You are a valiant fighter, stranger. I admire your strength and grit. What would you ask of me? Just stop causing trouble around here, okay? The golems have enough to deal with right now. I respect your wishes. Good luck on your quest. 
True to his word, the Tartarus left the Alps. From day 71 to day 74, I returned to my base, only to see that someone had completely wrecked it. Confused and afraid, I ran in to see what had happened. Thankfully, Dave the Drop Bear was okay, and he told me the whole story. It was terrible, Zozo. That nasty blighter, the slave water, showed up and attacked the base. He was looking for you, and he was turning everything upside down trying to find you. And when he didn't, he just stole that car that I found for you a few weeks ago. I'm sick of that heinous henchman. No more being cowardly. I'm going to hunt that creep down and fight him on his own territory. That sounds like a plan, Zozo. That nasty slave in water has had it too good for too long. As I prepared the plan for my counterattack, Humbaba, back at his base, was refining a plan of his own. We have the door. My minion has the key. When Zozo takes it and clears the path for me, the battle axe will be mine. From day 75 to day 78, Dave the Drop Bear had fully repaired the base and added a perimeter wall in case someone came to attack the base again. We still left a door in the front for visitors, such as the Gold Golem, who came over to give me a gift before I led my assault on the Slave and Warder. I have a gift for you, Zozo. A firework crossbow. It's a powerful ranged weapon that may give you the advantage you need. Wow, Gold Golem, this is awesome! Thank you! We have a lot riding on this quest, Zozo. I have reason to believe that the Slaven Warder may hold the key to opening the door in the ancient forest. If you can defeat the Warder, you can defeat Humbaba once and for all. Finally understanding the true importance of my mission, I took the firework crossbow and left to battle the Slaven Warder outside of Humbaba's base. From day 79 to day 84, I arrived outside Humbaba's base, ready to face the Slaven Warder. He was waiting outside, like he knew that I was coming. I will destroy you now, Zozo, to show my loyalty to my beloved king! That might be the saddest thing I've ever heard, dude. I fired my firework crossbow at him, stunning him, before running in with my super speed and delivering a volley of attacks with my diamond sword. I never gave up, just striking him again and again. Once my assault was over, the slave and warder was destroyed, and I had enough XP to level up again. I reached full power and full speed with 100 hearts and a whirlwind attack. The slave and warder also dropped both my kythar and a key to the door in the ancient forest. Huh. That's convenient. Still, I can't look a slave and warder in the mouth. Time to go and get that battle axe. And so, I set off back towards my base, having no idea that I was playing right into Humbaba's hands. From day 85 to day 89, before heading to the door in the ancient forest, I arrived at my base to give Dave the Drop Bear the good news. So you found the key after all. Good on you, mate. Since we're sharing good news, I'm pretty much done with the defense bunker. If you want, you can add the final block. I'd be honored to, Dave. I added the last block, finishing the bunker for good, and then I ran over to the ancient forest door. It's now or never. Time to get this battle axe. I unlocked the door and went inside. The brimstone caverns were dark and frightening, and I remembered what the gold golem had told me about the frightening monster guarding the battle axe. And then I ran into the monster, a huge, scary Cerberus. A uh, good doggy? I unleashed a whirlwind attack on the Cerberus and then pulled out my Kyther. The Cerberus was one of the toughest and most vicious enemies I'd faced, but in the end, I defeated it. The battle axe was mine. From day 90 to day 94, I was ready to leave the Brimstone Caverns with my battle axe and defeat Humbaba and his evil minions once and for all. I expected I'd need to go all the way to his base to fight him, but no. He was waiting for me in the Brimstone Caverns, staring into my soul. Thank you for collecting my battle axe for me, Zozo. I would have done it myself, but being the King of Beasts is busy work. Me and the other animals will never accept you as our king. You have no authority. Oh, believe me, Zozo. With that axe, I have all the authority I need. No golem nor beast will be able to stand against me. Because I'm feeling generous, I'll give you one more chance. Since the slave in water is gone, I need a new second in command. It could be you. It'll never be me. Ever! Fine, then perish. And just like that, the ground exploded beneath me, and I fell down into a chasm in the floor. 
I was knocked out, and when I woke up, I realized that the battle axe was gone from my inventory. Oh no, Humbaba must have taken it. From day 95 to day 97, I used my wall climbing ability to get out of the pit that Humbaba had trapped me in. With the battle axe, I had no way of knowing what terrible things he could be getting up to now. I left the brimstone caverns at light speed, needing to get to the Alps and warn the gold golem that Humbaba was probably going to come straight for them. And I was right, but I was too late to do anything about it. The golem's fortress was in ruins, and the only survivor, the gold golem, was barely clinging on to life. I ran in and tried to help him, but it was too late. Zozo, you're alive. So that monster lied. That's a small solace, at least. I'm so sorry that I wasn't here in time to save you, Gold Golem. You did so much for me, and I let you down. Don't worry about me, Zozo. You need to go back to your base. That's where he'll be heading next. Go, quickly, before it's too late, my son. The Gold Golem was right. As he passed on, I ran off in the direction of my base as quickly as I possibly could. On day 98, I returned to my base, only to find that more terrible things had unfolded. The whole place was in ruins, and Dave the Drop Bear was hiding behind a piece of mostly destroyed wall, trying to remain hidden. Oh no, even moving at the speed of sound, I still wasn't fast enough to stop Humbaba. When he heard my voice, Dave finally felt safe enough to emerge. Crikey, Zozo, I thought you were a goner. I'm so happy you're okay, mate. I'm only alive because I hid inside the bunker we made. I'm so sorry that I didn't get back in enough time to stop Humbaba from doing all of this. I don't even have the battle axe anymore. He took that too. We've got no hope of stopping him. Don't talk like that, Zozo. You've gotten us this far. I just know you can take us the rest of the way. You're the fastest thing alive, aren't you? If that nasty creep stole the battle axe, who better than you to steal it back and end all of this? You're right, Dave. I need to run towards this, not away from it. It's time for us to finally win. So, at the speed of sound, I set off to take back what was rightfully ours. On day 99, I blasted through the ancient forest towards Humbaba's base. Nothing would stop me from getting inside and stealing back that axe. You're gonna regret ever messing with this supersonic Humbaba. I arrived and did a super jump over the wall, clearing it effortlessly. When I landed, I saw Humbaba standing there, seeming surprised to see me. Are you here to submit to me, Zozo? Nope, I'm not here for you at all. I sped off, running away from Humbaba and traveling deeper into his base until I came upon a chest that looked important. I looked inside and found exactly what I was looking for, the battle axe. I could feel the power, the strength, and the pull of destiny. I was ready to take on the beast that had caused so many people so much pain and get rid of him and his evil for good. On day 100, full of power and fury, as well as my incredible speed, I returned to Humbaba, wielding the battle axe I'd taken back from him. The wannabe king of beasts was waiting for me. Are you this eager to be destroyed, Zozo? You're traveling towards a dead end at the speed of sound. All the chances I've given you to give up and swear fealty to me, your true king. The only thing you're the king of is being an arrogant windbag. I'm sick of hearing you brag and posture about how cool you are when all you do is destroy things. You're not a ruler, you're a monster. If I'm a monster, Zozo, come and slay me if you think you are strong enough. Careful what you wish for, your highness. The battle was on. Using my supersonic speed, I unleashed a whirlwind on Humbaba, throwing him off his rhythm. But I didn't stop there. I sped in and struck him with the battle axe, moving too fast for him to hit me or defend himself. I struck him again and again, knowing that soon it'd finally be over. And then it was. Humbaba had been destroyed, and I was the one who did it. Humbaba will never destroy or enslave anyone ever again. We're all free. On day one, I spawned in into the Badlands as a shapeshifter. Whoa, that's a cool special ability. I wonder how far I can go with it. But I didn't have long to think about that because a gang of wither skeletons with bows and swords showed up and started chasing me. Darn it, I wish I could go faster, but I'm only a baby shapeshifter and that means I've only got three hearts. But even though I was weak, that didn't mean I couldn't shapeshift. I hid behind a rock and turned into a rabbit. Nobody ever suspects a rabbit. 
The wither skeletons kept searching until they found my little rabbit self, acting casually. The leader of the wither skeletons immediately clocked me. There he is, boys. Grab him. The wither skeletons immediately surrounded me, giving me no chance to escape. Uh -oh. Wait, how did you know it was me? There are no rabbits in the Badlands. You've still got a lot to learn, shapeshifter. Let's take him to the jail. On day two, the wither skeletons dragged me over to the Badlands jail. You can't do this. I'm too young to go to jail. But that didn't seem to persuade them. They threw me in a cell with another prisoner, a quill beast. I had to figure out what was going on. Hey, Mr. Quill Beast, I'm Zozo. What's your name and what are you in for? The name's Quilliam. I don't know why I'm here. I was just wandering the Badlands when suddenly the Wither Skeletons arrested me and dragged me here. Don't worry, Quilliam. I have an idea for how we can both escape. No offense, Zozo, but I really don't know how a rabbit could launch a jailbreak. That's the thing. I'm not a rabbit. I'm a shapeshifter. I used my power to turn into a wither skeleton, just like the ones who ran the Badlands prison. We used one of Quilliam's quills to pick the lock, and the two of us walked down the hall together. Yes. Another wither skeleton stopped us on the way. Hey, where are you two going? I'm just taking this prisoner to a different cell block. Nothing to see here. Mm, fine, I suppose. On your way. In my wither skeleton disguise, Quilliam and I slipped out of the Badlands prison without a second thought. That was amazing, Zozo. You saved both of us in there. These shapeshifting skills really come in handy. I can't wait to get better at them. On day three, I decided to continue my escape and make my way into the jungle. It'd be way harder for the bad guys to find me amongst all these dense trees. But if I really want to fit in here, I can't just be a wither skeleton. I need a real jungle disguise. That's why I shapeshifted into an orangutan. Orangutan is Malay for person of the forest, so it makes for a perfect jungle disguise. All this shapeshifting was hungry work, so I explored the forest and gathered up some tasty melons to eat. Mmm, delicious and nutritious. But while foraging, I encountered a mysterious wooden villager meditating in a clearing. Sorry to interrupt you, wooden villager, but is everything okay? Everything is more than okay now that you're here, Zozo. What? How did you know my name? I know many things. I am Ama, the jungle mystic. I have long traveled this jungle in search of a hero to whom I can reveal the great truth of the world. Do you believe you are that hero? Well, I'd like to be, for sure. Good. Then follow me. There is much to learn. On days four to five, Ama, the jungle mystic, led me deeper into the forest, where he started to explain what was going on here. So does the problem here have to do something with the wither skeletons? No, the wither skeletons are irrelevant to the true issue here, Zozo. You see, this forest is overrun with vicious tribal gremlins. Alone, they may not look like much, but together, they can pose a major threat. For the sake of the world's peace and safety, we must see to it that they are defeated. We have less than 100 days to exterminate them before things really get out of hand. Wow, that sounds like a tall order. These tribal gremlins must be really scary. How should I fight them? Don't worry about fighting them just yet. I'll be able to help you plan the best course of action. For now, take these tools and start building yourself a base. Ama the Jungle Mystic gave me a set of stone tools, and I left him to go find a clearing in the jungle where I could start building my base. I immediately started cutting down trees for wood and mining for stone. My base was already coming along nicely when suddenly a wither skeleton scouting party appeared out of the woods. He's gotta be around here somewhere. Come on, boys, let's find this slippery little crate. I needed to think fast. Obviously, a rabbit was no good, and they'd probably be expecting another wither skeleton. What could I turn into that would save me? Oh wait, I've got it. I shapeshifted into a wither boss and floated over to the wither skeletons. What are you boys doing out here slacking off? This is unacceptable. But boss, somebody escaped to prison. We need to go track them down. Forget about one lousy prisoner. Go back and stand guard to make sure more don't get out. And that's an order. Yes, with the boss, sir. The wither skeletons turned tail and marched out of the forest. I breathed a sigh of relief and my shapeshifting skills paid off because I earned enough XP to level up. Whoa, I have six hearts now and I can shift for longer. This is awesome.
On day six to day eight, I took the form of a baboon so I could finish building the house and it looked amazing. I decided to explore for a bit. As I was walking through the jungle, I noticed something a little strange. Wait, where are all the animals? Is this something to do with the tribal gremlins that Amma the Jungle Mystic was telling me about? As I was gathering some coal, a stray ran past me. Whoa there, everything okay, stray? There's no time to talk. I need to keep running. Get out of my way. You're safe here. Explain yourself. My town was destroyed by the Red Nightmare and his forces. He's taking over everything. If you had any brains in that baboon head of yours, you'd run while you still can. And then he ran off, leaving me confused. Red Nightmare? I'd never heard of that. So I decided to find Amma the Jungle Mystic again and ask him what he knew. Ah, yes, the Red Nightmare. He's another terrible force associated with those tribal gremlins I told you about. Perhaps it's time to arm yourself against the coming struggles. If you make your way to the snowy tundras and find the Frost Weaver, you'll be able to obtain a mace by defeating it. Go now, the tribal gremlin threat advances ever closer. On days 9 to 10, I shifted into a snow leopard so I could both move faster and stand the cold. Then I made my way out to the snowy tundra to begin my search. I'm gonna find you, Frost Weaver! But what I didn't expect was that the Frost Weaver would find me first. It was huge and ferocious, and it attacked me as soon as it saw me. He spit poison webs at me, which really slowed me down. I figure I can't ask you nicely to hand over the mace then. The Frost Weaver didn't feel like chatting with me. Instead, it relentlessly attacked, knocking off a couple of my hearts. There was no way I could defeat a monster this powerful. But to my luck, I suddenly saw a snow golem running towards me. Golems have a natural protection instinct, so I was really in luck here. Don't worry, kid. I'll give you a hand. The snow golem joined me in the fight, and we were able to turn the tide. Soon, the Frost Weaver was defeated, and I had picked up the special mace he dropped. Thanks for helping me there, snow golem. I really owe you one. Think nothing of it. Why don't you come back to my cave with me? My family and I could make you some dinner. So we traveled back to the ice cave where the snow golem and his family, some baby snow golems, lived. He gave me some mushroom stew that helped replenish my missing hearts. I suppose you're out here fleeing from the Red Nightmare. That's why most people come to brave these frosty wastes. The Red Nightmare? As in the tribal gremlins? Tribal gremlins? I've never heard of any such thing. How strange. Well, I better go ask Ama about it. Thanks for the stew. On days 11 to 12, I assumed the form of a formidable Komodo dragon and returned to my base. Ama, the jungle mystic, was waiting for me. Ama, something isn't right. I got the mace, but while I was out in the snowy tundra, I met a snow golem who knew about the red nightmare, but not the tribal gremlins. How could that be? I wouldn't worry about it, Zozo. Instead, go to this cave I've marked out on your map. You can mine some iron ore there and perhaps use it to upgrade your armor or gear. It will be vital in the coming struggles. Once you have your iron, you can begin the attack on the tribal gremlin camp to the left of here. Okay, if you say so, Ama. Still, it's a little weird to say the least. I went to the cave that Ama marked out for me. I made my way in and started mining the iron ore. There was a decent amount of it down there, but not enough to do what I really needed. I did grab the extra coal that was there, though. Then, when I left the cave, I was ambushed by a lurker, one of the nastiest little creatures in the jungle. Thank goodness I have my mace with me. With one swing of my mace, I'd smushed that nasty creature and was off on my way to the tribal gremlin camp. From day 13 to day 15, I came across a path. This must be the way to the village. I took the form of a gremlin so nobody would really notice me, and I followed the path. I arrived at the tribal gremlin camp. It was basically a huge village made of tree houses in the jungle. I was expecting it to be scary, but honestly, all the tribal gremlins seemed weirdly peaceful. I decided to talk to one of them to see what was going on. Hey, uh, fellow gremlin, you looking forward to causing some more chaos in the forest today? He just looked confused. Chaos, what are you talking about? I turned and saw a very chubby, stern-looking tribal gremlin chief sitting behind me. There will be no chaos around here, boy. We need to stay organized if we want to have any hope of defeating the Red Nightmare. The tribal gremlins wanted to fight the Red Nightmare too? I thought they were in league with them. Nothing was making sense. I needed to go back to my base and talk to Amma the Jungle Mystic immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base. 
I took the long way back through the jungle, trying to figure out some kind of reasonable explanation for what had happened. Could Ama had been lying to me this whole time? But why? When I arrived back at my base, there was a tribal gremlin waiting for me. He looked like he was in a panic. Stranger, we need your help. Something terrible has been attacking our village. Something terrible? I'll come right away. But by the time I arrived at the village, it looked like the worst had already happened. The village was in ruins. The tribal gremlin chief was dead. Only his mask remained. And standing in the middle of it all was Ama. Ama, how could you? The tribal gremlins are friendly and peaceful. To you, perhaps, but to my plans, they were a frustrating inconvenience. What do you mean, your plans? I never told you my full name, did I? I'm a shapeshifter like you, you see. Some call me Ama, but my true name is Amogolish, perhaps better known as... Suddenly, Ama shapeshifted into a huge, blood-red creature, the true Amogolish. Wait, you're the Red Nightmare? Very clever, Zozo. I thought I could trick you into destroying the tribal gremlins for me, but it seems you're completely useless. So you can be destroyed with them. I was so angry that I turned into a huge vile ogre and charged at Amogolish, the Red Nightmare. He would never use me to do evil. But I underestimated how strong he was. With one strike, he knocked me down from the bridge and everything faded to black. From day 20 to day 22, I woke at the bottom of what remained of the destroyed tribal gremlin village. I'd failed. I'd let them all down. But thankfully, at least some of them had survived Amogolish's monstrous attack. But now we have no place to live. We can't just survive out here in the jungle. He'll pick us off one by one. That's when I turned into a horse. Nobody is living out in the jungle. Hop on my back, and I'll let you come live at my base. We can work together and stop Amogolish from destroying anywhere else. One by one, I took all the remaining tribal gremlins back to my base and started building a barracks for them. If Amogolish thinks he can destroy us all, we're not gonna go down without a fight. From day 23 to day 26, I traveled out to the desert. That jungle humidity can be killer sometimes. I decided to turn myself into a roadrunner so I could run extra fast across the sand. Meep meep. It feels good to feel the wind blow between my feathers. But I had to stop when I saw a sun god being attacked by a gang of enhanced aeropedes. They must have been sent by Amalgalish. Don't worry, sun god. I'm here to help. I ran in and started circling around the aeropedes, distracting them from attacking the sun god. That gave the sun god a chance. I unleashed the power of the sun. He sent out a powerful sunblast, hitting and vaporizing the aeropedes. And he never could have done it without me. I never could have done it without you, Zozo. In exchange, I give you the blessing of the sun. From now on, you will be stronger and faster in daylight. You will also gain a few hearts. That's such a cool power. Thank you, Sun God. And the two extra hearts will come in handy. May my blessings be with you. From day 27 to day 31, I went back to the jungle. I missed all those lush green trees. On the way back to the base, I found some sheep wandering around the jungle. They seemed lost, so I decided to take a stone guard form and shepherd them back to my base. When they were back, I started to build a pen for them. Now I can have as much wool as I want. This is perfect. I also decided to make a bigger wall around my base to protect me, the sheep, and my tribal gremlin guest from Amogolish and his minions. Meanwhile, in Amogolish's evil lair, he was meeting with his deadliest warrior, the behemoth, a huge demon knight. What would you have me do, master? I thought this Zozo could be useful, but it seems he's just a thorn in our sides. If we are to dominate this world, he and those who ally with him must be destroyed. Make it so. Yes, my master. I will destroy him personally. From day 32 to day 35, I decided I'd wander the plains in search of new allies and weapons. I needed to figure out how to defeat Amogolish. Because I didn't want to get attacked by any monsters on my journey, I decided to shift into a mutant skeleton. Nobody would mess with that. Stop right there, monster. I turned and saw a gang of armed villagers ready to fight. They started firing arrows, and I was forced to dodge as fast as I could. Wait, stop! I'm not a monster, I'm Zozo. I'm just a shapeshifter. That got the villagers to calm down. They lowered their weapons and began to murmur amongst themselves before turning back to me. Come with us, Zozo. We want to take you to our leader, 
the great King Midas, the ruler of gold. It led me back to their village, where Midas was waiting for me, in a golden throne, in the middle of the village. He was certainly an impressive sight. Ah, so my men brought you to me. There must be a reason. Why are you here, my boy? I'm trying to find a way to slay Amalgalish and get revenge for the tribal gremlins. Correct answer. Amalgalish, the Red Nightmare, has troubled our kingdom for generations. Me and my ancestors have tried to gather information about him for years, and I believe soon we will have the answers. When that time comes, come back to me. From day 36 to day 39, I turned myself into a scarecrow, just for fun, and entered the mine in the village. I mined iron to complete my new set of tools and armor. And I got really lucky, cause it wasn't just iron ore I found, I also found some diamonds. Not enough to craft just yet, but they were definitely worth keeping in my inventory for a rainy day. Though the most exciting thing I found down in that mine shaft was a dusty old book containing an unbreakable enchantment, which would make my new items unbreakable. I crafted a full set of iron tools, iron weapons, and iron armor before returning back to my base to rest. But sadly, there would be no rest. When I got back to my base, an Aztec warrior was already there, waiting for me. King Midas sent me to collect you. He wishes to speak to you about a truly grave matter. Then I suppose I better come along. From day 40 to day 43, I returned to the village to meet with King Midas. I wondered what had gotten him so worried, aside from the fact that I'd now shapeshifted into a gorilla for toughness. Zozo, I'm glad you're safe. Of course, your highness. Why wouldn't I be safe? My spies have gotten word of a terrible development in the war against Amalgalish. He has summoned his most dangerous minion, the Great Behemoth, and he has given him the instruction to destroy you personally. Don't worry, King Midas. I've gotten a lot tougher than I used to be. I bet I could kick this behemoth guy's booty. Why don't you say that to my face, weakling? I turned and saw the behemoth was standing right behind me while the villagers fled in every direction. He was even bigger and tougher than I'd imagined. I charged up towards him and used all my gorilla strength to deliver a mighty punch. But the behemoth just shrugged it off. He hit me back and sent me skidding across the village square. Take this new form, my boy, the gold golem, and use it in my name. With my new gold golem strength, I pulled out my mace and attacked the behemoth. Somehow, he effortlessly blocked every hit and started rampaging around the village. I need to get out of here. I'm still not strong enough to beat even the henchmen yet. So, I fled the village while the villagers tried desperately to stop Behemoth. From day 44 to day 49, I returned to my base, feeling so ashamed of myself for running away that I turned myself into a blobfish. I don't deserve to call myself a hero. I left all those poor villagers to fend for themselves. I'm a zero. As I was moping, none other than King Midas turned up, having survived the previous battle. Zozo, I need to call on you yet again. I don't deserve you, King Midas. I was a coward. I ran away. Don't focus on the past, Zozo. We're not going there. I'm here because I have some important knowledge. There are legends of a sacred item, a mithril battle axe, that can be used to defeat the Red Nightmare. Mithril battle axe? But I already have a sword and a mace, and neither of them help. The mithril battle axe is more than just a weapon, Zozo. It's supernatural. It can give its users immense power, even granting them wishes. But it is legendarily hard to obtain. You will either need to find one or make one from mithril ore. The mountains would be the best place to begin your search. From day 50 to day 53, I decided to take the form of a mountain troll and go searching through the mountains for information on the mithril hammer. Maybe if I find it, I can regain my honor after running away from Behemoth. The way up the mountain was tough. At the top, I searched and searched until I found a secret cave tucked away under one of the mountains. It seemed like the kind of place where something important might be hiding away. I put up some torches to light my way inside of the cave, but sadly I didn't find any mithril or a mithril battle axe in there. But I did find a book, labeled The Legend of Amalgalish. 
Hey, that's the guy I'm fighting. The book described how Amogalish is an ancient evil who has tried to take over the world many times. But only someone who is of pure heart with a perfect weapon will be able to put him down for good and save everyone. Maybe I do have a shot after all. With at least some extra knowledge, I started heading back to my base. The way down was just as treacherous as the way up, but I eventually made it. When I reached the jungle again, I heard some commotion, and I saw a Clink fighting a whole gang of scary jungle spiders. Don't worry, Clink, I'll help you. But by the time I reached him, he'd already defeated all the jungle spiders without breaking a sweat. He was clearly a lot stronger than I was. That was amazing, Mr. Clink. Want to come back to my base? I need someone to help train me how to fight like you. Sorry, buddy, but I'm not the teaching type. Old Clink is too free-spirited to ever be tied down like that. Good luck with whatever you're doing, though. From day 54 to day 57, having been rejected by Clink, I continued back to my base. Well, at least this day can't get any worse. You have a big storm coming, Zozo. I turned and saw that literally the last person I wanted to see right now was standing right behind me. Behemoth, a Mogulish's number one goon! Oh no, not you again! I believe we have some unfinished business. Square up and prepare to meet your doom! I shifted into my gold golem form and pulled out my mace. This time, I was going to win! I charged straight at him with impressive speed, and with all my might, I swung the mace right into his face! And it had no effect. I still wasn't anywhere near strong enough to fight Behemoth. And all I could do was run away while he laughed at me! Meanwhile, back at Amogalish's evil lair, he was receiving information from his top advisor, the impish Pixin. Tell me, Pixin, how goes the war effort? Are our forces winning? We've crushed resistance to the east. Our Wither Skeleton army has been successful in raiding the villages to the west. Soon, I'm sure, the north and south will fall too. And what of Zozo? Has Behemoth destroyed that little brat yet? Soon, my lord. Behemoth says that our mission will be even easier than he thought. Delightful. Just delightful. On day 58 to day 62, I returned to my base, feeling a little down in the dirt. So I turned myself into a swamp pig. I'm so ashamed of myself. It feels like I can't do anything right. But when I got back, I was so happy to see that the tribal gremlins had increased the size of my base. They built new rooms and a whole new floor. It's the least we could do since you let us stay here with you, Zozo. I was so touched by their kindness that I wanted to do something for them in return. I'd build a statue, but not just any statue, a tribute to the fallen tribal gremlin chief. I started collecting all the proper material when I happened upon an abandoned diamond mine out in the jungle. I wonder if there are still diamonds down there. I went in and started to mine until I finally found enough diamonds to craft a pair of diamond armor pieces, a pickaxe, helmet, pants, and some cool boots. It isn't much, but it'll certainly help. From day 63 to day 66, one of the tribal gremlins approached me. Zozo, I think I know where you might be able to find a mithril battle axe like the one you were looking for. There's a special cave out in the desert, one that's sacred to my people. We might be able to find it together. That sounds like an excellent idea, tribal gremlin. Let's do it! We set off together until we reached the desert. With my shape-shifting powers growing by the day, I decided to shift into a guster so I could fit into the desert environment. After two days of walking, we finally found the cave. It looked deep and dark, and as I stepped forward to enter, the tribal gremlin stopped me. Wait, Zozo. I just remembered something important. You can't go in the cave. Not yet. But why not? We really need that mithril battle axe, tribal gremlin. But you need to obtain a soul heart first. I've heard of legends that those who enter the cave without one lose their souls, so we need to seek one out. Yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem like a pretty solid call. From day 67 to day 70, the tribal gremlin went home, and I continued exploring the desert, hoping to find a soul heart. It's a shame they don't just hand out those things, huh? Suddenly, I was distracted from my search as a coyote running towards me. He looked really worried. Hey, stranger, mind lending me a hand? There's a nasty Sudaramu bothering me and my coyote brothers. Sure thing. Maybe I can help defuse the situation. I ran after the coyote until I found a group of coyotes being attacked by a huge Sudoramu who was clawing at them. He looked like he was in a really bad mood. Sudoramu, stop bothering these coyotes. Mind your own business, fool. This is between me and the coyotes. 
The second you start bothering people, it is my business. Time to fight. I ran to the Sudoramu and began to fight. He was tough, but he didn't seem like he really wanted to destroy me. He just liked fighting people. So I gave him a good fight. Every time he swung his claws at me, I was able to dodge, then hit back. My hits barely bothered him, but he seemed like he enjoyed having the exercise. Yeah, that was a good fight. I like your style, man. You're a pretty good fighter yourself, Sudoramu. How about instead of fighting random coyotes, you go up against a real opponent? Like helping me take on that demon, a Mogulish. Now that sounds like a good time. From day 71 to day 74, after not finding anything in the desert other than a cave I couldn't enter, I returned to the base. Only to find that Behemoth was already there, and he was annihilating my base. By the time I got back, half of the base had been destroyed, and he was attacking the tribal gremlins trying to rest there. Sozo, you're back. Good. I was getting bored destroying all your friends. Behemoth, you monster! You're going down for this! Try me. I transformed into a Vex, pulled out my mace again, and attacked Behemoth. My rage fueled me, and this time, as I attacked him, it looked like I was actually doing some damage. You've improved, Zozo, I'll give you that. But you're still nothing compared to me. Behemoth hit me back, stunning me and taking down several of my hearts. And while I was stunned, he grabbed one of the tribal gremlins and ran off with him. Gremlin, no! But there was nothing I could do. After I got my strength back, I teamed up with the other gremlins to rebuild the destroyed sections of my base and create a new guard tower to watch out for any future intruders. At a Mogulish's lair, he was laughing with glee as his army of monsters and skeletons prepared themselves for the next battle. It is almost time. Soon, I will wipe out the resistance and all will be mine. From day 75 to day 78, King Midas once again arrived at my base, carrying a gift. Zozo, I have heard about your recent losses and your valiant attempts to get your hands on the Mithril Battle Axe. In the meantime, please, as a token of my gratitude for all the work you've done, take this. Oh, wow, King Midas, thank you. What is this? It's a sword of undying. My old battle weapon from my adventuring days. It's not the Mithril Battle Axe, but this is a powerful, well-forged weapon. I believe Behemoth keeps his own private lair out in the plains. Perhaps you should go show him how well you can use this new weapon. From day 79 to day 84, I arrived at Behemoth's lair out on the plains with my Sword of Undying, ready to do battle. I stormed in, ran past the skeleton soldiers, and saw that Behemoth was waiting for me. This is it, Zozo! I've gotten bored of playing with my food. You won't be leaving this lair. And when I've destroyed you, the master will give me power and riches. Your creep of a master is never going to see you again, Behemoth. Skeletons, grab this fool. Skeletons surrounded me, but I managed to take them down without much effort. I focused on Behemoth next. Sword in hand, we fought. Behemoth was still incredibly strong, but I felt like I was finally ready to take him on. But as the fight went on, even though I was doing some good damage, Behemoth started to turn the tide. He fought harder and harder, hitting me again and again, watching my hearts drop. Even with the regeneration and extra absorption health the Sword of Undying gave me, I was still losing this fight. Everything I'd worked for was about to be for nothing. You've been amusing, Zozo, but I won't miss you when you're gone. Just as Behemoth was about to finish me off, one of the walls of his lair exploded, and Sudoramu broke in to save the day. Zozo, eat this! He threw me a golden apple. I'd never seen one like it before, and I immediately took a bite. Immediately, everything changed. I could feel myself getting bigger and stronger, and not just regenerating hearts, but doubling them. With the 16 hearts, I shifted into ultimate gold golem. And with the Sudoramu at my side, I was ready to finish this. The two of us attacked the behemoth together, giving him no chance to take us out. I climbed to the top of the gate wall and jumped on the behemoth, swinging my sword at his head. He was defeated once and for all. I looked and saw that the destroyed behemoth had dropped a soul heart onto the ground. Wow. Now that was a good fight. Say, what's that thing he dropped? Sudoramu, that's our ticket to the big time!
From day 85 to day 89, while still out in the plains, I shapeshifted into a double-headed vile ogre. I stumbled upon some clay and dug it up to use on the tribal gremlin chief statue. This is gonna look awesome, and I bet my tribal gremlin roommates will really appreciate it too. I returned to the base and completed the statue. Seeing it there inspired me and reminded me of what really mattered, all the innocent people I was fighting for. With the statue done, I set off for the desert with the behemoth soul heart in my inventory. I could finally enter the sacred cave and obtain the mithril battle axe. It would be a great day. But when I entered, things weren't so easy. There were husks everywhere. And just as I was about to clear them all, a terrifying Jabberwock jumped out of the cave and started attacking me. I needed to pull out King Midas' sword to fight him off. And even then, it wasn't easy. It was like nothing has been easy for me these last few months. But with the Jabberwock cave guardian defeated, I saw it there, waiting for me. The mithril battle axe that would solve all of our problems. I picked it up and felt its power surging through my hands. Ignites and knocks back targets. Well, that is useful. Things are looking up at last. From day 90 to day 94, I emerged from the cave with the mithril battle axe, wondering what I'd use it for first, when I saw that a mogulish was standing right in front of me. Hello again, Zozo. Think I'd let you get away with destroying my most powerful henchmen? For that, I'm going to destroy you myself. I didn't feel like talking to this monster. Instead, with the mithril battle axe in hand, I charged at him, ready to strike. I got one hit in. He instantly hit me back and sent me flying. The hit was so hard, it knocked the battle axe right out of my hands. Before I could get up, he snatched the mithril battle axe, even though I'd only just gotten it. You won't be needing this anymore. In fact, I think I'll make much better use of it than you ever did. Goodbye, Zozo. There was an explosion, and the desert ground beneath me caved in, trapping me in a pit. A mogulish disappeared, off to do something awful, no doubt. One step forward, two steps back. From day 95 to day 97, I needed to do something clever to escape the pit. Thankfully, this was where my shape-shifting skills came in handy again. I turned into a bald eagle and flew right out of there, heading towards King Midas' village. With the mithril battle axe lost, I needed to ask him for advice on what I should do next. But it was already too late. When I arrived at the village, I saw it had been completely ransacked. All the buildings were destroyed. I couldn't see any villagers. All that was left was King Midas, near death, next to his broken throne. I flew down and turned into a golden villager, approaching King Midas to see if there was anything I could do to help. I'm sorry, it's already too late for me. Amalgalish used the Mithril Battle Axe to improve his power to unimaginable levels. He destroyed the entire village. You must stop him. You're our only hope. I will stop him, King Midas. I promise, he'll pay for everything he's done. King Midas passed, and I journeyed back to my base. On day 98, I arrived back at the base and found that my worst fears had been made real. A Mogulish had come here too and destroyed everything. The base was in tatters, and most of the tribal gremlins were gone. I'd failed. I couldn't protect anybody or anyone. It seemed like a Mogulish was going to use the Mithril Battle Axe to rule the world. I felt so terrible about myself, I shapeshifted into a cockroach. Just as I was about to give up hope, one of the last tribal gremlins approached me. I'm so sorry that I failed, tribal gremlin. I let your people down from beginning to end. But this isn't the end, Zozo. You can't give up. If a Mogulish could use the magical axe to destroy all this, then maybe if you get your hands on the axe, you can make it all okay again. And in that moment, I knew that the tribal gremlin was right. If that axe could get us into this, it might be the only thing that could get us out. On day 99, I shapeshifted into King Midas himself as a tribute to the great king's legacy. As him, I approached Amogalish's base, wielding his sword of undying. To my surprise, Amogalish himself came out to meet me, holding the mithril battle axe, exactly as I'd hoped. King Midas, this is impossible. I dealt you a lethal blow with the mithril battle axe. You must be... Zozo, and I'll be taking that axe. Yes, to the face. This time, Amogalish lunged at me first, upset at being tricked. But that's when I took my opportunity. As he swung the mithril battle axe, I dodged and snatched it from his hands. 
Thanks, Amogalish. I promise I'll bring it back. With the battle axe in hand, I ran back to my base as fast as I could, hoping that it still had some magic left over after all the damage that Amogalish had done with it. I arrived back at my base and began to wish, holding the axe tightly in my hands. I wish for all the tribal gremlins to be brought back and for my base to be fully repaired. That's all I ask for. And seconds later, the axe vanished from my hands, never to be seen again. But my wish was granted. My base was back to normal, and all the tribal gremlins had been brought back. You saved us, Zozo. Thank you. And now, together, we can save everyone else. Like Amogalish himself said, just one tribal gremlin doesn't count for much. But all of you together, we can bring Amogalish down for good. Let's go save the world. On day 100, I led the tribal gremlin strike force straight into Amogalish's lair. As wither skeletons poured out to fight us, the gremlins took them on. Gremlin freedom forever! And as the fight raged on, of course, Amogalish crawled out of his lair, ready to fight me personally. You worthless little creature. I should have destroyed you when you were small and weak. It would have saved me a lot of trouble. It's too late for regrets now, Amogalish. They won't do you any good. Stubborn and arrogant to the end. Do you really think you can beat me? You're not even carrying a weapon. I'm a shapeshifter, Amogalish. Don't you know what that means? What? It means I am the weapon. And with that, I turned into my final form, a giant ender dragon. No, this can't be. It isn't fair. I can't be defeated by some other lowly shapeshifter. I'm the most powerful being in the world. But all that complaining didn't do him any good. I unleashed my most powerful dragon's breath attack on him, and by the time I was done, there was nothing left. Amogalish was defeated! And once the tribal gremlins were done defeating the last of the wither skeletons, the world could finally be at peace once again. On day one, I spawned into the middle of the Mojave Desert as a wild, wacky space alien. Four hearts? I think I literally have four hearts in my chest, too. Being an alien sure is wild. I was ready to begin exploring the planet and collecting information to send back to the mothership when I was suddenly surrounded. A bunch of armored skeletons formed a ring around me, and the one who seemed to be their leader, a bejeweled ancient mummy, observed. What's going on here? I'm a visitor on this planet. I don't mean any harm. Silence, you alien invader. You speak when spoken to. This isn't your world. Take me to your leader. We can get this all straightened out. The armored skeletons parted to let the mummy step closer to me. I am the leader here. Bow before the mighty Pharaoh Golden King. That's him, by the way. Do not interrupt me. With one strike, the Pharaoh Golden King destroyed the underling that had interrupted him, and I had a feeling that I would be next. Uh -oh. Diplomatic discussions have collapsed already. I'm out of here. I deployed my alien poison bomb attack and ran away as quickly as I could during the confusion. Get him, you fools. I want that worthless invader destroyed. I ran as fast as my alien legs could carry me under the boiling heat of the Mojave sun. This was meant to be a 100-day mission. I needed to survive that long and then get out of this nightmare. If only I could find a way to phone home. On day two, I journeyed until I found a safer part of the Mojave. I need to follow the directive of my mission, but if I don't start building a roof over my head here, I'm gonna burn to a crisp in the Mojave heat. I'd received training on my home planet to build things in this strange place they called the Overworld. I found the nearest tree and broke it down, making a crafting bench and a wooden pickaxe to start with. Now let's source some harder materials. I used the wooden pickaxe to mine into the ground and collect some stone blocks, which I used to craft a pickaxe and a stone sword. Creation and destruction. Awesome. I started crafting myself a basic shelter made out of sandstone, only a living area with a bed and some shade to begin with. Two days in, I was already so exhausted. I needed this. I took a break to replenish my energy, only to be ambushed by a gang of the armored skeletons who served Pharaoh Golden King. I keep telling you guys, I mean no harm. I'm just here to learn and discuss. That poison bomb you unleashed told a different story, you little alien jerk. I only did that for self-defense. Can't we just start from square one and reopen negotiations? 
How about instead, we reopen your head with our swords? Get him, boys! The armored skeletons attacked me, but thankfully, with my stone sword, I was able to fight them off and defeat them! That was a close one! I need to know when these things are coming for me in the future! That's why the last thing I did before going to bed was build a furnace into my base, gather some desert sand, and turn it into glass. I went to sleep in a base with some nice new windows, perfect for seeing threats from a long way away. On day three, I decided to explore and try to discover new materials that I could potentially incorporate into my base. That's what led me to wandering through a nearby meadow. This place is so relaxing. It's the exact opposite of that exhausting, boiling nightmare of a desert. But that relaxation didn't last for long. A gang of mossy skeletons noticed that I was wandering through the meadow and decided it would be the perfect time to come and attack me. I'm already sick of fighting all these bony jerks. I managed to fight most of them off with my stone sword, but by the time I was almost through, I was exhausted, and there was still a mossy skeleton advancing towards me. Oh no! Then suddenly, an arrow flew out and destroyed the mossy skeleton in the nick of time, saving my life! The person who fired the arrow was a hairy troll. Thank you for saving my life there, stranger. I'm Zozo. Don't mention it. You seem a little bit strange yourself, Zozo. Name's Harry. I'm guessing you're not from around here. Was it that easy to guess? I'll be honest with you, I'm an alien from outer space, sent here on a fact-finding mission. You better be careful, Pharaoh Golden King doesn't take kindly to outside visitors. You don't need to tell me twice, he tried to destroy me when I first arrived. I was lucky to escape him and his armored skeletons with my life. You met him and his guards and survived? That's fascinating, I've never even heard of that before. You must be really something special, Zozo. You seem to know a lot about this. How about you come stay at my base while I figure everything out? Sure, anything to get out of this awful heat. This planet needs AC. So Harry the Hairy Troll, my first friend on this alien planet, followed me back across the meadow. From day four to day five, Harry the Hairy Troll and I returned to my base camp in the Mojave Desert. It's certainly sunny out here, I guess. It's not too bad. I haven't been attacked by any giant mutant scorpions or anything, yet. I am getting a bit hungry though. Trying to push the potential thoughts of giant mutant scorpions out of my head, I set about building new rooms and floors in my base for Harry to stay. He had already saved my life from hostile locals once, so I figured he might be my good luck charm. How do you like the room, Harry? It's not exactly the Ritz, but it'll do. Also here, have some steak. Not sure if you aliens eat that, but it tastes pretty good to me. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna hit the hay and take a little nap. Go for it, buddy. You've earned it. And thanks for the steak. It did indeed taste pretty delicious. And while Harry was napping, I had to repel another attack from a gang of Pharaoh Golden King's relentless armored skeletons. We return in the name of Pharaoh Golden King, the almighty, divinely appointed ruler of this world. We will smite you. Smite you until you are no more. Not if I smite you guys first. I fired another poison bomb, disorienting the armored skeletons. Then I pulled out my stone sword and took each and every one of them out. Told you that you'd get smote. I also noticed that the armored skeletons had dropped a new weapon for me, a blowgun that fires poison darts. A long range weapon, perfect. From day six to day eight, I was wandering out through the desert around my base and trying to herd desert rabbits back with me. But my attempts at hurting those dusty bunnies were interrupted by another unwelcome guest. But it wasn't just a gaggle of minions this time, it was Pharaoh Golden King himself. Your time is at an end, you extraterrestrial fool. You are facing Pharaoh Golden King, and as such, your annihilation is imminent. I'm not afraid of you. I've defeated plenty of your goons already. How much worse could you be? It's not just me. It's my weapon, the Dead Hand. Its decomposing nature eats through stone like acid. Let's see how it does against aliens. The Pharaoh ran at me, and with one strike of his hand, I lost a lot of my health. It was terrifying. I turned and ran as quickly as I could as the Pharaoh continued to follow me, slashing with his hands. Gotta run, gotta run, gotta run! But even as I ran, Pharaoh Golden King kept gaining on me. I needed some way to distract him. I stopped and used my blowgun to fire a poison projectile right into his face. Oh no! How dare you! You're fighting like a filthy coward! 
but I'd rather be a coward than destroyed. I ran away as quickly as possible, knowing there was no way I'd be able to face him at my current strength. This dusty old dictator really is a force to be reckoned with. From day 9 to day 10, I returned to my base to settle down and rest after having such a stressful day. Pharaoh Golden King was so much tougher than I thought. But while I was sitting around, moping, Harry the Hairy Troll came over to deliver some encouraging words. Come on, Zozo. You came all the way across the galaxy to get here. You can't just give up now. But he's so incredibly powerful, Harry. He tried to attack me again, and I barely escaped with my life. But you did escape, Zozo. You escaped twice. Pharaoh Golden King has cut down everyone else who's faced him. But the fact that you got away more than once means something. Yeah, I guess he may have a point there. Head out into the yard, Zozo. I've been building something for you. I think you'll like it. I went outside and saw with amazement that Harry had started building some kind of statue dedicated to me. I couldn't tell what it was yet, but I was already so excited to see how it was coming along. This is so cool. I can't wait to see what it is when it's finished. Do you have any idea what it will be? But that wasn't all that Harry had made for me. He'd also created a huge wall around the base to keep us protected from the attacks of the Pharaoh and his minions. I'm feeling a whole lot better already. From day 11 to day 12, my psychically sensitive alien brain received a telepathic vision while I was sleeping. It told me how Pharaoh Golden King first came to power. He was an ancient ruler who had been dead and locked away in a tomb for thousands of years. Until one day, for reasons nobody understood, he resurrected. He also came back with all his undead warriors and servants, and everyone else was forced to do his bidding or be destroyed. Nobody on this world had ever found the secret to defeating him, but since I didn't come from this world, maybe I'd have a chance. From day 13 to day 15, I returned to the meadow, wanting to prove to myself that I could defeat a horde of mossy skeletons without Harry's help. Here, Skelly, 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 I'm all alone this time. Come and get me. That got their attention. A group of mossy skeletons came running towards me, heavily armed and ready to battle. But this time, so was I. I used my stone sword to battle them all myself, taking them out one by one until none remained. After defeating them, I gained enough XP to level up. I can feel myself growing, whoa! This must be some kind of alien evolution. I got bigger, stronger. I now had 20 hearts, and it activated the stealth capabilities of my space skin, allowing me to briefly cloak myself and go unseen. The Pharaoh and his evil undead minions will never see me coming. From day 16 to day 19, I stumbled upon what seemed to be an abandoned mining village. The building seemed to be abandoned, so I followed the path to the top of the mountain, where the entrance to the mine seemed to be. I ventured down into the darkness of the abandoned mine. Seeing as I'd gotten a lot stronger, thanks to all my experience, it was the perfect time for my weapon to get stronger too. The data the mothership sent me suggests that iron is a stronger material than stone. I better forge my next weapons and tools out of iron. I traveled further into the mine until I found some iron ore, but it was being guarded by an extremely hostile armored zombie. I really need this iron. I guess you probably won't listen to me asking nicely, right? I turned invisible and pulled out my blowgun. With a few quick poison darts, the armored zombie was defeated. I stormed in and mined all the iron ore I could. Carrying this back to my base is gonna be a real pain in the butt. But when I arrived back at my base, I used my furnace to smelt the ore into enough ingots to make myself iron tools and some iron leggings. Oh yeah, this is more like it. From day 20 to day 22, I got a rude awakening with Harry the Hairy Troll running into my room in a panic. What's happening, Harry? You're freaking me out here. It's the Pharaoh. He's right outside. He got in past the wall somehow. We need to do something. Oh no, oh no, I don't think I'm ready for this. You're gonna have to be ready, Zozo. We don't have a choice right now. Without a moment to waste, I ran out of the building and faced Pharaoh Golden King in the courtyard. He was still holding his deadly hand up in the air. You pulled a cowardly trick on me last time, Zozo. Will you fight like a true warrior now, or will you be a coward again? I've been wondering about it. I have an answer for you, Pharaoh. I'll battle you right now. Head on, let's do this. At least you will be destroyed bravely now. Good boy. The Pharaoh attacked me, and this time I fought back with my iron sword, never backing down, never relenting. 
After a tense battle, the pharaoh broke away from the fight. You've impressed me, Zozo. Perhaps you've earned a better death than this. We will meet again. And with that, the pharaoh fled. He told me he was impressed, but I knew the truth. He was scared, scared not just of how strong I was, but of how strong I could get. There was hope for me yet. Maybe I won't just leave this planet. Maybe I'll save it first. From day 23 to day 26, I decided to upgrade my gear some more. I gathered up some iron, smelted it, and used that to craft myself an iron chest plate. I tried on my new chest plate, and I definitely felt more protected. Iron armor was definitely a good idea. Between this and how strong I'm going to get, I really think I've got a chance to save this planet. This really has been a heck of an adventure so far. There's always something new in store on this channel. Make sure to subscribe and search ZOZO to find more amazing Minecraft adventures. Now, back to my mission. From day 27 to day 31, Harry the Harry Troll came to see me. Zozo, I've done some more work on the statue. Come check it out. Oh, okay. I followed him and took a look at the statue. I still couldn't tell what it was going to be yet, but it was definitely looking really cool. This is awesome. Thanks, but I wanted to get your advice. I feel like it's missing something. What do you think would make it better? I just want it to be the best statue ever. Hmm, maybe it should be a little more colorful? That's a great idea. But what could we use to add some color? How about flowers? There are so many beautiful flowers on this planet. Great, you can find lots of flowers in the meadow. If you go pick some, I can keep working here while you're gone. Sounds like a plan. See you later, Harry. So I headed out to the meadow and started looking around for the prettiest flowers I could find. It smells great out here. Who knew there was so much beauty on this planet? There's so much worth fighting for and so much I want to protect from the pharaoh. Just as I said that, I saw some of the pharaoh's armored skeletons destroying a bunch of flowers. Hey, stop that! We are acting on the orders of Pharaoh Golden King. You presume to defy his word? You got that right. It's cowardly to hurt flowers. Pick on someone who can fight back. If you insist. The armored skeletons attacked me, but my new chest plate kept me safe and gave me enough time to swing my iron sword back at them. Soon enough, I defeated them. I grabbed some flowers and got ready to head back to my base. From day 32 to day 35, I was about to go back to my base when I came across a group of desert skeletons. I wasn't trying to pick a fight, but they attacked me anyway, so I had to destroy them. I come in peace, but that doesn't mean I'm a pushover. Just then, a wood villager came over to talk to me. Excuse me, I saw how well you fought those desert skeletons. Could you help me with something important? Sure, what's going on? The desert lord has kidnapped my swamp pig. He claims that as a lord, he has fair ownership of all pets in the area. But that doesn't seem right to me. Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't go to law school. No, you're right. He can't just steal your pet like that. I'll help get your piggy friend back. Oh, thank you. You're the kindest, well, whatever you are, that I've ever met. I'm an alien, but more importantly, I'm Zozo. No time to waste, let's get that pig. From day 36 to day 39, the wood villager told me where to go to find the desert lord. He was hiding out in a base in the savanna. I followed the villager's directions until I found the desert lord's base. This must be the place. Let's see what the deal is over here. Staying out of sight and making sure the desert lord didn't spot me, I crept around the area looking for clues. Inside the walls, I spotted a cage with a swamp pig inside. That must be the stolen pig, but how can I get him out? Just then, the desert lord came out of his base. I quickly turned invisible to hide from him as he walked up to the cage. I hope you're getting used to your new home, little pig, because you're never going back to that loser owner of yours. <laughs> the only way out is this key of mine that I never let out of my sight. So I'd like to see him try to get you back. Just kidding, he won't, because like I said, he's a loser. If I want to rescue the swamp pig, I'm going to have to get that key. Looks like the only way to do that is to get him to drop it somehow. I know, I'll turn visible right in front of him and scare the pants off of him. He'll be so startled, he'll probably just drop the key. Oh, what a great plan. From day 40 to day 43, I set my plan into motion and worked on getting the key from the desert lord. Staying invisible, I snuck up behind him, then became visible again just as he turned around. Boo! 
Whoa, that was pretty scary. I almost dropped my key, but I didn't because I heard you coming. Fool, you can't best the lord of the desert so easily. You know what? I'm getting pretty sick and tired of guys like you who think they can push everyone around just because they woke up one day and decided to be in charge. It's not fair. I don't know how they do things on your planet, but here, life ain't fair. Not if I have anything to say about it. I drew my sword and attacked. For someone who talked such a big game, the Desert Lord wasn't very good at fighting, and before long, I had knocked the key out of his hand. I quickly grabbed it. While I was doing that, the Desert Lord ran away. You haven't seen the last of me. I hope that's not true. Anyway, time to save this pig. I unlocked the cage, and the swamp pig came running out. Let's get you back to your owner. I took the swamp pig back to the wood villager. Thank you, Zozo. Thank you so much. I missed you, Snuffles. Welcome back home. I'll never let anyone take you ever again. From day 44 to day 49, I headed back to my base with the flowers for Harry's statue. Here you go. I hope they give the statue the pop of color you were looking for. These are perfect. Thank you, Zozo. Great! I'll leave you to your project then. With Harry busy working on the statue, I decided to make some improvements to the base myself. I'd like to have a way to keep a better eye on things and make sure no one tries to mess with us. If only I had some sort of tower that I could watch everything from. Wait a second, that's it! With that idea, I decided to build a watchtower. I also extended the walls to prevent the scenario from last time when Pharaoh Golden King just walked in. When I was all done, I went back to check on Harry and see how the statue was going. I used the flowers to add some color. Looks great! What is it, though? You'll have to wait and see. From day 50 to day 53, that new watchtower came in handy because I could see the pharaoh coming with a bunch of his armored skeletons. I got ready to fight them off, but there were a whole lot of them. Zozo, I see you are still attempting to defy me rather than accept your fate. Why don't you come over here and fight me about it? Why should I dirty myself with the work of a peasant when I am the almighty ruler? No, I will watch from afar as my army decimates your little home. He raised his hand and the armored skeletons swarmed around my base. There were so many of them, I could barely keep up. While I was trying to fight off the skeletons, Harry the Hairy Troll wandered over, taking a break from his statue building. Hey, what's going on out here? Seize the hairy one! Wait, no! No one sees me! A bunch of armored skeletons grabbed Harry and ran away with him. I was so busy fighting off skeletons that I couldn't stop them. I'm off to hide your little friend somewhere you'll never find him. No! But it was too late. The pharaoh was gone, and so was Harry. There were still plenty of skeletons left to fight too. After a while, I managed to defeat them, and even though I was worried about Harry, I couldn't help but get excited. My hearts increased to 40, and I grew bigger and stronger. I gained a new alien ability too, energy blasts. From day 54 to day 57, I got to work repairing the damage that the armored skeletons had done to my base. I had to patch up one of the walls. I also added some gates to the walls since having walls with an open entrance has proven to not be a very effective defense strategy. Now that that's done, I need to figure out how to get Harry back. I wonder who can help me. Hey, that wood villager seemed to know a lot about bad guys who abuse their power. I'll ask him about the pharaoh. I traveled to the meadow and found the wood villager there, frolicking through the flowers with his swamp pig. Hey there, sorry to interrupt, but the pharaoh kidnapped my friend, and I really need to get him back. Oh, no. Well, I know what it's like to have someone steal your friend away from you. You helped me, so I'll do my best to help you in return. I've heard a rumor that the pharaoh takes his prisoners to a base in the Shattered Glacier, but you'll need stronger weapons and armor to go there. He's got all kinds of guards. You're not ready dressed like that. No offense. None taken. I'll work on a wardrobe upgrade. Thanks. Bye, Zozo. I hope you find your friend. From day 58 to day 62, I headed back down into the abandoned mine to look for more resources. If I'm going to take Wood Villager's advice, I need to find some diamonds. I've heard they're an alien's best friend. At least when it comes to upgrading armor and weapons, that is. Otherwise, my best friend is definitely still Harry. Speaking of which, I've got to get mining so I can save him. I started mining, looking for the telltale sparkle of diamonds. While I was digging, a mossy skeleton came out of nowhere and attacked me. 
Hey, I'm mining here. The mossy skeleton didn't care. And hey, look, diamonds. I gathered the diamonds, took them back to my base, and used them to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword. I feel much better about my chances now. From day 63 to day 66, I wandered around my base for a little while. I knew I needed to keep going, but I was feeling so sad about Harry being gone. What if I couldn't get him back? I decided to go check out the statue and see what he was working on. I still don't know what it is, but it looks so good so far. I hope Harry will be able to come back and finish it. If he doesn't, I don't know if I could do it by myself. But no, I can't think like that. He'll come back, he'll finish the statue, and we'll enjoy it together. I saw a note left on the ground by the statue. Oh, maybe this is about the statue. No, it just says, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Weird. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to work finding Harry. From day 67 to day 70, I took my new diamond weapons and traveled to the Shattered Glacier to find Harry the Harry Troll. When I got there, I saw a base that had to belong to the Pharaoh. It was covered in gold. Time to rescue Harry. I started to head toward the entrance, but then I saw all the armored skeletons positioned outside. Uh oh, gotta take care of these guys first. I turned invisible, snuck up on the armored skeletons, then hit them with my energy blast. While they were recovering from that, I swung at them with my diamond sword. Before too long, I had defeated every single one of the skeletons. Then I got ready to head deeper into the base. Hold on, Harry, I'm coming to rescue you. From day 71 to day 74, I continued my fight deeper into the pharaoh's prison base. Along the way, I found some throwing axes on the ground. A skeleton must have dropped these. Well, I guess no one's using them, so I might as well take them. I picked up the throwing axes and kept looking. Harry, Harry, are you here? Zozo, is that you? Yes, where are you? I'm in here, help me. I followed the sound of Harry's voice and found him in a cell. Stand back. What are you going to do? Watch this. I fired an energy blast at the bars, breaking them apart. Come on out. Harry ran out of the opening in the bars. Be careful, the pharaoh is right upstairs. Then we'll have to move quietly. I can turn invisible, but you can't, so let's move slow and keep it down. You've got it. Together, Harry and I started sneaking out of the prison. I kept my sword ready, just in case we ran into any trouble. From day 75 to day 78, Harry the Harry Troll and I snuck out of the Pharaoh's prison. We were just about to pass through the door to freedom when I suddenly heard the Pharaoh's voice behind me. Come to rescue your friend, I see. You did well, far better than I would have anticipated. I underestimated you again, my mistake. Pity neither of you will be making it out of here alive. You've said that kind of thing before, and every time I've proven you wrong. You said it yourself, you underestimated me. Silence! Get behind me, Harry. Harry jumped behind me, and I got my diamond sword ready to go. I fired an energy blast at the Pharaoh, but he was too far away. You will have to do better than that. He swung his hand at me. I fired another energy blast, and this one made contact with the Pharaoh. Gotcha! Thank you for the energy, Zozo. A fitting offering for a ruler of my caliber. Let me put it to good use. From day 79 to day 84, I watched as the Pharaoh began to transform. Instead of hurting him, the energy from my energy blast attack had given him the power to change. He started growing larger and stronger until he was twice as big as he was before. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. In this form, nothing shall stand in my way. Let's get out of here, Harry. Run all you like, you won't get far. I will find you. You can run, but you cannot hide. Might as well try. Harry and I started running and ran all the way back to the base. The Pharaoh didn't chase us, but I knew that wouldn't be the last time I saw him. From day 85 to day 89, Harry and I made it back to the base. That was a close one. It sure was. Hey, now that we have a second, I have something I think you'll want to see. It's part of an escape shuttle you can use to return to your home planet once the pharaoh is defeated. It just needs you to fix it up a little bit. That's amazing, thank you so much. I'll get started on this right away. While you do that, I'm gonna get back to my statue. It's almost finished. While Harry went to finish the statue, I started working on my escape shuttle. It seemed so impossible before, but now maybe I would get to go home. But I needed a way to contact home first, and I still needed to take care of the pharaoh. 
Come look, Zozo. It's all done. I went to go check out the statue, and I was amazed. Harry had built me a radar antenna so I could send a signal into space. I can use this to phone home. Yes, that's the idea. But why did I need the flowers? Just to remind you to stay positive while we're trying to sort everything out. Thank you so much. Now, if only I knew what to do about that pharaoh. I might have an idea for that, too. I heard that there's a desert lord out in the savannah who might know something. I remember that guy. I'll go check it out. From day 90 to day 94, I went to the desert lord's house in the savannah. You again. What do you want? I heard you might be able to help me take down the pharaoh. Why would I do that? You stole my swamp pig. You stole him first. Yeah, right. You got me there. So, are you gonna help me? Fine. Why not? I never liked that pharaoh much anyway. Always walking around like he's so much better than me, showing off that scepter or whatever it is. I think I have something that'll help. Here. He handed me a mace. It looked super sharp. Oh, wow. This is really nice. How come you've never tried to use it to fight the pharaoh yourself? Sounds like a lot of work. I'd rather let someone else take care of him instead. Like you. Okay, I guess. Well, thanks for the weapon. Don't steal any more pets, okay? No promises. From day 95 to day 97, I returned to my base with my new mace. This is great, but if I'm going to be ready to face the new, bigger, stronger pharaoh, I need to up my firepower and my armor too. I decided to head back into the mines and see what I could find. If I was a bunch of diamonds, where would I be? Let's see. I mined for a long time and finally found some diamonds. But that wasn't enough. I needed to keep looking. I found a chest in the mine and opened it. Inside, there was a book with a fire aspect enchantment. This is amazing. I'll use this to enchant my mace. Then it can catch enemies on fire. On my way out of the mine, I spotted one more thing. Some Molotov cocktails were sitting on the ground. There were even more in the chest next to them. Now that's what I'm talking about. Since I can't use my energy blast without making him bigger, I need to use all of these instead. I took everything I found and headed back to my base. There, I enchanted my mace and used the diamonds to craft a full set of diamond armor. On day 98, I was testing out all my new weapons and equipment at my base. I threw a Molotov cocktail and watched it explode. That's gonna do some damage, for sure. Next, I tested out my newly enchanted mace, which was even more powerful than it was when the Desert Lord gave it to me. It's all coming together. I was pretty worried before, but things are starting to work out, and I think I can really do this. I can't wait to phone home and tell him what I did. But I can't get too ahead of myself. I've got to defeat the Pharaoh first. Also, I have to remember that you can find more Zozo videos by searching Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O, and be sure to leave a comment about what you want to see next. You might see your idea in our next video. On day 99, I took all of my new equipment and traveled back to the Shattered Glacier. When I reached the Pharaoh's base, I got ready for what was in store. No turning back. It's now or never. Let's do this. I got past the armored skeletons with no trouble this time. Then I headed deeper into the base to look for the Pharaoh. I turned invisible while I searched, wanting to get that element of surprise this time. Finally, I reached the throne room where the Pharaoh was sitting. Pharaoh, it's time for us to end this. I appeared in front of him, and he stood up, brandishing his hand. I agree. Time for the best to be crushed, once and for all. You chose to invade this realm that belongs to me. Now you must face the consequences. I let you live for far too long, little alien. Enough talking. I came here to fight. I swiped at him with my mace, and it did some damage, but the fire enchantment also burned him. I attacked and got a good hit in. I also shot a few blow darts at him, but they did almost nothing. Throwing a poison grenade seemed to have some effect, so I kept on swinging my mace. The energy of the enchantment rushed through me, and I felt myself evolving again. I grew stronger, my heart increasing to 100. I felt something itching in my eyes, like something was about to happen. Suddenly, I fired a laser beam from my eyes. It hit the pharaoh, knocking him back and blinding him. No, that can't be. Yes, it can. I may not be from this world, but I sure am going to save it. With that, I threw a Molotov cocktail at the blind pharaoh. He frantically ran all over the palace until he perished. It was the final thing I needed to defeat the pharaoh. On day 100, I returned to the base to tell Harry that it was all finally over. 
I did it! I defeated the pharaoh! I'll never terrorize anyone here again! Thank you, Zozo! That's amazing! Do you want to use the radar to call home? Yeah! Also, I like the work you did to the place while I was gone! Good job! You can live here once I'm gone! Thank you very much, Zozo! This means a lot! I used the radar to send a Morse code message to my home planet! It's me, Zozo! I saved the people of this planet from a great evil! And now, it's time for me to come back home! I'll see you all soon! Then, I finished up my shuttle, and it was finally ready for me to board it and fly back to my planet! But first, I had to say goodbye to Harry! Thank you for everything! I'll miss you! I'll miss you too! You've been a great friend! Come back and visit, won't you? I'll do my best! Think of me whenever you look up at the stars! You just might be looking at my planet! I hopped in my shuttle and flew off into space! Finally, it was time to go home!